that's me. Hello, everybody. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on what time it is for you where you are. Happy Thursday. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Pardon me. Welcome back. And uh, look at me. I'm in retail world of Warcraft. Isn't that something? Yesterday, um, I don't know if you caught yesterday's stream. And if you did, I don't know if you got the whole thing. But if you don't know, yesterday, Sharkbait finally dropped for me. I got the freehold mount. So now, that leaves me with 17 characters that are, you know, I don't want to say homeless, but they need a new place to, to camp out, is what we're saying. Yeah. And uh, there was a couple of options, and I was kind of mulling them over to myself, and I've decided that at least for now, for this particular moment, what I want to do is I want to run them through LFR Tuma Sargeras, specifically the Gates of Hellwing, to try Mr. Sassine for the Abyss Worm. The amount can drop an LFR. I do not have it. And the appeal of this is that it is the only thing that was even easier than doing um, than doing Freehold because um, any any of my characters they can just dollar run Hearthstone. They're right here at the LFR QNPC. Um, you can you can do that once per week. I could get more chances per week if I actually took characters to LFR or pardon me to Tumas Argaris and like ran the instance. But I don't really want to do that. So this is this is this is my my thinking. Let me look into my rarity stats and see if it has any attempts recorded for me already. I know I've been running this off and on for a long time. Um, I was kind of miffed that I didn't get it during Legion because I rated this raid as much as the next person. Oh hey, look, it's the number one. I have 74 tracked attempts. I'm sure I have more than that in general. But yeah, well, you know, send her in. Gates of hell. Off we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Mm. Morning, Hazel. Good morning. I also want to thank Macy Does for a 24-month resub. Happy two years. Is this finally my moment to get the butterfly in my acorn? Wish you all the luck on the map runs, Hazel. Thank you very much. Do I operate the same in LFR? A great question. I assume so. I don't have definitive proof of that. I don't think they started doing wonky things to mount to, to drop rates. Like legendaries, yes. Mounts, I don't know. I feel like if it's gonna drop an LFR. Well, actually, now that you mention it, I feel like if you're talking like the Sanctum mount, like the the nine mount from um, whatever that raid that we don't talk about was, then that one, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's a short version. I'm just saying words to say them. <sighs> I will be the next person. I did this raid exactly zero times. So you didn't do it a lot, apparently. All right, all right. Let's, uh, let's do this. I, the other appeal, I mean, I know it's the first three bosses anyways, so it's not like you would have to clear a whole lot of it on regular, but the other appeal of this is that, um, you know, with LFR, you, you just get the part that you need. Um, Mog-wise, I had kind of told myself I wanted to put off farming this raid until the account-wide or, like, the armor-type agnostic Mog came in, but I have almost everything from this wing and all armor types anyways because I've just run it so many times, at least on LFR. Um, perhaps I'll put off doing any farming on higher difficulties until the War Within, but I feel like, especially now that this is like our new thing, you know, I gotta have something to run 17 times a week. If this is gonna be the new thing, then it should be, um, it should, it should just drop for me, right? <laughs> Hear me out, since you're in a BFA role, King's Rest. Oh man, yeah, but I don't know, man. That one's a that one's a low low prio right now. That is a I don't want to say a last resort because I have other things that are a last resort. But <clears throat> um, the other thing that was competing heavily right now with this run for my time was my goodness, it's a lot of stuff. Uh, the other thing that was a strong option. I'm just gonna run around the stairs. I'm not gonna. Am I gonna jump down? We're just kind of heading... I feel like every time I do the jump down, it's like not better. Yeah. <sighs> the other thing was uh, rise keys, because while this season is still current, it's kind of like a unique opportunity to try to grind out quantum coursers. I'm just... And I know that I really should, because it's a much better chance at the dungeon mounts that I'm missing than farming them organically. <sighs> but I would almost... And this is absurd scene of me, but I would almost rather wait until Dawn of the Infinites is soloable just on regular Mythic Zero in its entirety. Even though I know that the Courser's off the last boss and you'd have to run the whole thing, 
I would almost rather do that than like try to game like rise keys just because I don't want to do mythic plus again. What <laughs> it's I've been I'm retired. I am retired. Um, and I don't want to have to, like, mount runs are, are a thing for me where I really like not having to involve other people. Any luck? Nope, okie dokie. Um, I, mount runs are very much a solo thing for me. I, if I'm doing, if I'm in the mood to do group things, that's when I go to raid or I do mythic plus or I, well, not so much solo shuffle. You just pretend those people are robots. But, um, I really dislike involving other people in my mount runs. So that's another reason why I'm hesitant to do the rise key spam thing. Currently on 800 plus attempts for this local rep raft. I hope it drops soon, Derek. <laughs> Look at me multitasking, watching Hazel and in a BG. Ooh, who are you? I'm not saying I won't do BGs today. You're, you're kind of talking me into it. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the drop chance of the Quantum Courser is, but it seems a heck of a lot higher than 1%. Um, it seems like it's really not unreasonable. Like people have gotten multiples of them with a normal amount of rise key running. I haven't gotten any. Oh, I'm... <laughs> Give me out a freehold. I'm not doing that. But, uh, yeah, I think it happens. Can't you pretend the people in Rise Keys are robots? No, because I need to, like, coordinate them to even go to the dungeon. Like, I can pretend they're robots if I just join a pre-made plus two key, but that's going to be the slowest possible version of it. Um, that isn't necessarily better than just doing King's Rest. What if they evolve you in their mount runs? Oh, that'll never work. <laughs> How do you like the Dragonflight events? They're fine. I'm over them. I feel like I've had enough and I would like for it to be over now. Um, I don't mind them, but if 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 I see another one, I'm my tummy is going to go. Ugh. <laughs> it's just I, it's just it's, it's been enough, you know, gates of hell. There we go. Mm. Talk yourself into it. You don't need me to Had fun doing comp stomp all evening yesterday. Robots can coordinate things now. All right, well, when they can get me into their s Well... Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> I don't buy it. Dune 2 was great. Take time to go see it. If only for the sound design. <laughs> As a matter of curiosity, if we are looking at, like, the entire raid's worth of stuff... Because this is just cloth stuff, eh? Yeah. So there is still, oh, that's right. Hargitin can drop priest gloves specifically. So not just cloth, but priest. Um, I do have a couple of priests, so I do have a couple of chances for this to drop. And then Mr. Sassine has the Abyss Worm. I want to change it to account more. Did I change that keybind? Oh, no, I didn't. There we go. Hargitin. Uh, Elephar. Oh, no, there is stuff that I can still get. Hang on. there. I guess I just haven't been doing this enough on all my characters. So there's plate, leather... And then, uh, leather. I guess a lot of it is tier. I guess this is one of those raids where the tier items were just dropping directly or something. Like, not token-based. Because that means that you have to be on the right class. Not only the right armor type, but the right class in order to get the appearance, which is kind of bonko. Unless I'm misunderstanding. I need to finish my coffee. Uh, add-on for that interface. This is all the things. And, uh, you're welcome and I'm sorry. <laughs> it is a life-ruining add-on. It can track in... Excruciating detail, all of the things that you lack and tell you exactly where they come from. <laughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> Had some issues from with the changes from the book, but I'm uber nerd nitpicking. It's a good thing. Hmm. Both both things can both things can be fair. <laughs> Can't wait for it to tell me how incompetent I am. Oh man. I know there's a variety of settings in life in which you can program robots to insult you. I usually try and... I usually try not to, because... Because, you know... I don't know, it's not very nice. <laughs> Besides, often it's not even that the robot's insulting me, it's that the robot said something perfectly normal and I'm projecting. Let's go down the hill this time and see if that feels faster. Exactly, yeah, not incompetent, just incomplete. Competence has, has nothing to do with mount runs. There's very little competence required, really. The thing about mount runs is just stubborn, dumb, mule-headed patience. That's, that's, that's the, the one and only thing that you need. I guess maybe, like, um, 
I don't know, a little bit of Google food doesn't hurt to kind of figure out what like the the tips and tricks are, like what difficulties you're looking on. But if you can look something up in Wowhead, you can do power runs. It's just a question of how much time you have and how badly you want to be spending it doing anything else. There's a path back there. Yeah. Um, and you could also jump into the water. And I'm, yeah, yeah, maybe the water thing is faster. Finally, mecha done. Nice. Congratulations. Don't download the item for that reason. And I don't like it. That is fair. I resisted for a long time. People were trying to talk me into all the things for, like, I think years before I got it. Because the first time I downloaded it, I installed it, and I was immediately super overwhelmed. And I, I didn't like it, so I, I got rid of it. And I feel like I lived without it again for, like, another year or so. And then the next time I installed it, I really went into the settings and I gutted it. Um, because I, I wanted to have it work for me and not the vice versa. I really disliked the feature where it auto-loaded your, um, your mini list every time you change zones. I didn't want to, you know, I'm just flying through Nazmir on my way somewhere else. I don't need you to remind me of all the stuff I don't have. I'm not in the mood right now. I wanted it to be something that I called, not something that called me. And you can totally do that. You can, you can change all of those settings. Um... So I felt much better about it once I had gone in and turned off tracking for all sorts of things I didn't care about. And then also um, added keybinds to summon the lists of my own will and then removed everything that would automatically show me stuff that I was not ready to see yet. Um, some amount of information and tooltips can be helpful, but I found the default was overwhelming. Can the Jane amount be sold? A great question. I don't know. I haven't tried. I got the Jane amount in BFA. <sighs> Water root has the advantage of killing the pack near the water. Can drop epic BOEs. Hmm. Grats your parrot map from earlier. Thank you. Hmm. Auto call thing feels nice once you're hundred percent in many zones. Yeah, but it's still not relevant info. You're just you're just setting up notifications to stroke your ego at that point. <laughs> um I suppose it's just a different philosophy. I'm going to post those things on the auction house, aren't I? Yeah. I need mean, like 400k gold. <laughs> Some Yukos like stroke. This is fair. This is true. <sighs> I'm just, um, I'm weirdly picky about notifications. I, I'm really picky about them. If I get notified of something and I don't think it was important, I am scorching earth to whatever app did it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big absolutely not. I'm going to use my dollar on Hearthstone, that's right. What's wrong with a little ego? I'm not qualified to answer that one. <laughs> Got a sick Quillboard game and the Quillboard Quest too. Nice. Britt, I'll have you know that thanks to you, I have given dragons another chance, and I got a couple of a couple of high places with them. I have um I have forgiven dragons. <clears throat> it's Naga now that I can't quite forgive. Although I did get I think second place last night with like a Naga Mirage M Menagerie game, uh, where I got a golden Myrmidon and then a bunch of other stuff. It was kind of wonky. The end of my my end board was not so much me having a good board it was just me counter comping because the last two people I were fighting were, were beasts so i ended up with a golden baron a regular baron and a um blaster that three seven that a that a was the board because i was just trying to kill his um i was trying to kill his uh <clears throat> um banana slamma etc before it had a chance to go off and the reason i got second place and not first is because my blaster went first it attacked but it didn't die and he got a bunch of buffs on his Slamma before it died. And it lived with, like, one health, too, because it was, like, going so many times. Because it was a Golden Blaster as well. Um, I'm going to the Gates of Hell. That's right. <clears throat> Rusty Squid, thank you for the two-month resub. Hey, Hazel, hope you're doing well. Hello! I, I'm, I'm doing great, thank you. I hope you're doing well, too. Mediocrity Squared with a 22-month resub. Minagenagery. <laughs> Whenever I see my parents' phones, they have, like, 25 notifications showing. Drives me nuts. How do we feel about um, desktop icons? I know that there are multiple camps of this in terms of like quick launch icons that you keep on your computer desktop. Um, I I am I am the, and like you know shortcuts and like using your desktop as like a as like a storage catch-all bin. 
Oh, okay. Now I get it. I did not get it before. I thought we were just saying funny words. It's like when you say banana, but you keep going. Uh, how does one fall in love with a game? Um, you can't force it. <laughs> it's got to just happen. And if it doesn't happen, and you just you just you follow your heart, and you look around to something else. It just might not be what's important to you right now, and that's okay. <laughs> I never say funny words. <laughs> oh, you. Only desktop icons I allow temporary notepad reminders. Yeah, I'm a zero, zero to one icons girl if possible. Let me look at my desktop. Can I look at my desktop? No? No good. <laughs> um, I am, I, because I launch everything from the start bar. Um, I just launch apps from the start bar. Like I, and then on the start bar, like I'll Windows key and then I have my most used apps pinned to that menu. So I can Windows key and then I have a menu. Like it's like pulling out a drawer instead of having everything strewn across the desk. Um, then I can launch my OBS and my Premiere and my WoW and whatever. Um, but uh, desktop icons make me itchy. <laughs> and whenever I see a desktop that's got like, like, you know, somebody opens their laptop and the whole thing is covered with squares. I'm like, how do you find anything? And uh, and for the most part, they they just know where things are or they don't. And a lot of it is just kind of there, but it doesn't bother them. They've just learned to see past it. Um, but I cannot live like that. <sighs> Especially since computer indexing got good enough that you could launch things from the search bar as well. Like, I like having things pinned to my start bar, but if something's not pinned to my start bar, it takes me like two seconds to type the first two letters of it and then launch it from the search bar. Once upon a time, your, you know, computers were not so good at that and that would not have been an efficient method of launching an app. But um, nowadays you can totally get by like that because like it, it pulls up so quickly if you have SSDs and stuff. Um, two columns of icons at work, even that's too much for me. I have coworkers whose entire screen is icons and it stresses me out. Think about notifications. Every single one is someone tapping me on the shoulder going, hey, have you seen this? Yeah, I get weirdly righteous about them. Like, like my, you know, the thing will be like, hey, did you know that there, this pizza company has a sale? And I'll be like, you thought this was worth my time. <laughs> As I'm like laying on the floor doing nothing, mind you. It's not like I'm, it's not like I'm doing... I'm not out here curing cancer or saving the rainforest or like taking care of children. I am barely crawling by like a slug in my own life. But like, you know, the pizza place will be like, hey, you can get two for the price of one. And I'll be like, not now. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I guess I'm going downstairs. Folders, people, folders. But why folders on the desktop? Why not folders just like, folders for files. <laughs> Folders, folders for files. <clears throat> People with a clean desktop have a clean desk as well. My desk is cyclically clean in that it is, I clean it and organize it and I make it all pretty. And then as I get like overwhelmed and behind and like pseudo depressed, it'll get kind of like cluttered again. And then I will snap out of it and then I'll fix everything. But then it'll kind of like come back the next time I'm not doing so good. Um, it kind of works in cycles. What view do you use for opening folders? I use details, see others using icons. I like icons. I need the pictures, but I'm opening mainly files that have um, photo or video info in them. I'm opening screenshots, I'm opening video files. Um, I am rarely opening text documents. So, um, so icons make sense because it lets me preview what's in there more accurately. If I was opening mainly like text and data documents and spreadsheets and stuff, I would probably use details. I am leaving. I get a weird amount of satisfaction just talking about this. I love this kind of thing. <laughs> ah, crack, it's because I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Two for the price of one. Yeah, but the price of one they're using is the full price that nobody like ever pays for a pizza from this place. Um. Uh, what are you doing when this man drops today? After that. Depends on what time it is, I suppose, um, and what we're what we're feeling like. I want to play Battlegrounds. I want to level in Hardcore Classic. Those are the two things that I want to do. Oh, hi, kitty cat. I want to visit with kitty. Assume that it's 9.30. If it's 9.30, I'm probably doing Hardcore Classic. I think that more time lends itself to Hardcore Classic and less time lends itself to Battlegrounds. Um... Hey. 
guys is cute. My nails are chipping something fierce because I messed up when I painted them and I put the top coat as the base coat. And that's not how it's supposed to work. Yeah, Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not World of Warcraft Battlegrounds. <laughs> Power to the people that enjoy those. Not my game. That's all right. What if they have your favorite pizza on the menu? You just didn't try it yet. Possible. I like pizza, but I have a limited capacity for it. I can only do it so many times within like a given time frame. And I had pizza last week. Haven't queued up for anything from Dalaran before. Which do you choose for the Abyss Worm Hunt? Gates of Hell. Gates of Hell is the correct wing. I, and speaking of which, I should, I should go do that. <laughs> this is muscle memory talking over here. Yeah, I really am on autopilot. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I have tried making my own pizza. I would go as far as to say I really like the pizza that I make. It's not a hyper traditional pizza that I make, but it's yummy. Watch your step. <laughs> Two pipers only the start of the game. I'm doing it. Oh, you're in it. Yeah, you gotta get the pipers and the jazzers early. And my thing is I will always leave a jazzer on my board because you never give up on activating it. You're gonna get those those tavern spells to reactivate it. You can get that like Six tier Murloc, you can get those Rylock Death Screamers, depending on if there's more beats or Murlocs in your game. There are things that you can do to make him do his thing again, so don't just sh throw him out unless you direly need the board space. Um, because you want a lot of health in those blood gems, as you found out. We are going through the gates of hell, that's right. It is not a Kel zone. I, no, I don't put the dough on top of the toppings. The thing that makes it not super traditional is that the way that I bake the dough makes it... Um, Pretty, I, I like it pretty crusty on the bottom, so it, it's it kind of holds its shape. It's almost like a loaf of bread, but it's not like super tall like bread, but it's like a fluffy kind of bready crust. And then with like normal toppings on, but I sometimes like overcook it a little bit, so it's instead of it being gooey, it's almost a little bit more like if you've had um a uh, like a focaccia bread that had cheese on it that was all kind of like baked together. It's it's definitely more like a pizza than that, but that's the kind of category that we're we're heading towards. That's the road that we've set our foot on. Um, I think they're tasty. I just make them on a big old baking sheet. <laughs> I just, like, I make my dough in the bread machine, mind you. So I just, like, slap my dough ingredients in the bread machine, do a dough cycle for 90 minutes. Um, generally stretch it out into, like, a baking sheet-sized rectangle. Bang that on. Um, maybe coat it with a little bit of olive oil, but I also go pretty light on the oil, which I think is why it gets kind of crispy and not necessarily, like, um, it doesn't really look like the, the takeout pizza crust and it's not quite as oily. And then, you know, toppings. Chuck it in the oven until it's like baked. I'm not a I'm not a pizza stone girly. I they're heavy, you know, my wrists are tired. <laughs> <clears throat> Toppings of choice for me? If I'm making it and it's all up to me and I have anything that I want to work on, um givens are sun-dried tomatoes, feta cheese, black olives. Um, bonuses are maybe like some gorgonzola cheese, maybe some artichoke hearts. Uh, a little extra garlic. Um, sometimes I'll do this with like an Alfredo sauce instead of a pasta sauce. Sometimes I'll just kind of do like a garlic olive oil base. And then maybe like a little extra Parmesan, but like the, maybe a little spinach. Um, but the sun-dried tomatoes are key because I love them very much. <laughs> Run through Legion instances for a mod. Round pieces cook more evenly. I've never found mine to be like disturbingly uneven though. I feel like I will change my ways when I stop enjoying mine. <laughs> I'm stubborn that way. It's a tall pizza at the end of the day. I mean, it's not like everything has to be... It's not like we're building a lasagna, you know. <laughs> um, when I'm speaking of gooiness in this case, I'm referring to the cheese. The cheese gets kind of, like, crispy um, because I bake it a little longer than normal. Mm. Am I going this way? No. I'm going. I'm going. I'm, I'm swimming. I'm swimming. Yeah. It's not that much faster. It would be faster if I was better at it, but I'm like getting stubborn about this skip. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I did get a BOE though. Although they're not worth as much anymore. Although I actually need to learn that for transmog, so alright, alright. I'll forgive it. There we go. But the uh, well, threads of panic to escape. Treads of panic to escape, pardon me. Who hasn't ever called their shoes treads? Do you grate the cheese yourself? Uh, yeah, I grate the cheese myself. I used to do slices, but um, I, I just I just grate a bunch of it. If I'm... 
making, if I'm feeling really lazy, I will use the food processor to grate a bunch of cheese for it, but I usually just hand grate it. I've got it one with the big, the big grater holes. Um, Pre-grated cheese supposedly is sometimes not the best to use for melting because they use agents to help stop it sticking together that can make it a little bit wonky when you melt it. Um, that's what people always tell me. I never had a problem with it. I used to make pizzas with the pre-grated cheese. It was fine. Um, it was never a problem, but I, I just buy stick cheese because it's cheaper. <clears throat> and uh, and then I pre-grade that myself. Triple Piper. Oh, you're in it. You're living. I best worm? No. Okie dokie. <laughs> Why did they decide to give warlocks underwater breathing and a swim speed increase? What's the class fantasy there? You know, demons, the death. I'm reaching. I'm reaching real hard. <sighs> Hangover from undead. I don't know. Forsaken still have their own thing. They just really hate water. It is weird, actually. I agree with you. Doing work in 27 minutes, though, so. <clears throat> Listen, you gotta get your first place in the next 27 minutes. <laughs> How long is a BG for you on average? In my brain, it's 20 minutes. In reality, it is probably 25 to 40. Um, but whenever I'm, like, budgeting time, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, I got 20 minutes. I can do a VG. Um, I don't wear my watch. I let it run out of battery, so I don't know what time it is ever. <laughs> um, it's charging over there, theoretically. I've gotten very lazy about my watch and my phone since I started keeping them in my closet. We are going to the Wailing, no, not Wailing Halls. Gates of Hell, that's the one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm in a time vortex. I'm not paying attention to time when I'm doing VGs. And I am occasionally late because of it. Quite the life hack. Yeah, just ignore time and then you won't know. Um, this only works if you have no social connections or responsibilities to other people. Um, and your dog is flexible about when he goes for his walks. <laughs> As an ADHD person, do I sense another ADHD? You know what? Do I want to say this? Yeah. All right. I actually have sought out screening and an assessment for this because it's something that people have asked me about a lot and no <laughs> some tendencies but not a diagnosable level i as as far as as far as i and a trained professional can tell bizarrely enough counter to popular expectation do not have adhd it was genuinely a bit surprising uh how many walks do you go on per day three Three. Morning, after lunch, and or before lunch, or morning lunch time, and then um, the big one is in the evening. <laughs> Daylight savings ch change died. We're doing the fallback another year. I thought you were saying something about... Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah that's right. Clocks changed this weekend. Um, maybe I should put my watch on so I can figure out what time that is. <laughs> I accidentally had my alarm turned off this morning because I messed up and um was slept in for 30 minutes longer than i was supposed to so that's partly why i was a little bit late um and uh and i was thinking to myself will i notice the clock's changing i don't know i'm gonna have to change change the thing uh two or three it depends on the dog um i think our three is kind of a holdover from his puppy days when he needed to go out more often because when he was a puppy puppy he had to go out like nine times a day because the dog had to pee um and it was uh so you had to take him out like a lot Nowadays, he can hold it for a lot longer, but he needs the he needs the stretching the legs in the fresh air, and I need the stretching the legs in the fresh air. I don't think we're going to go below three, um, especially because we live in an apartment. So during the day when we're not on a walk, he's just kind of chillaxing at home, and he likes it, and he snoozes, and he's cozy, but, like, you need to balance that out with, like, getting out and seeing the world a little bit um, and, you know, doing some sniffs and seeing some dogs, and he, he, he deserves to have a balanced life. So we, we get out a fair amount. Speaking of which, we went to the grocery store. Uh, we walked him into like kind of a busier area of town last night because I needed to pick up some stuff. And uh, my partner waited out outside with the dog. And then I went in and did the shopping. Then we went back. 
But because, A, we were th- going through, like, a busier part of town with, like, a lot more going on, and that was, like, kind of working him up. And secondly, he had to wait for me outside with, you know, supervised with my partner. I didn't leave him alone or anything. Um, Moosey was so worked up. Am I dumb? I am dumb. Um, this is fine. That, like, he was, like, flip, like, backflips when I came out of the store. And it took, like, ten minutes to help him calm down because he was just doing his, like, evil leash thing where he's just, like, romping and playing and trying to bite the leash and, like, oh, man. And there's, like, people, there was likely, like, a little part of grass we could, like, pull over so we could do this and not be in everybody's way. But it was, like, people were, like, openly laughing. Oh, hey, be we. Um, it was, it was genuinely pretty funny. He's cute. He's a cute boy. I think he's sparked some joy for some people, but he was so worked up. I'm, I need to take him that direction more often so that he gets more used to it. Um, but he was just really full of beans and he needed, he didn't have a, an outlet for his energy because he had to sit and wait quietly for mom to come out of the store. <laughs> Moose will play now. <laughs> mm. predisposition for being silly i am heavily predisposed for silliness <laughs> uh is the criteria more stringent than stuff like me feeling easily distracted there are a lot more factors that go through it and it's also something that as i've come to understand and i'm not an expert i'm just parroting what i heard from an expert as a neurodevelopmental disorder not only are these is it is it necessary for these things to be in your life now but also that they were there during childhood it's kind of like it's not just something that you pick up later um, there are a lot of things that can mimic a lot of the symptoms, which is what I'm finding because I, I have a lot of struggles, but there's a lot of different things that can do that. <sighs> um, and also the other thing that I learned is that you might meet or not meet diagnostic criteria at different points in your life. Different outside factors and different lifestyle factors can kind of influence how strongly your symptoms might present, which could mean that depending on when you get screened or when you get assessed, you might meet or not meet those criteria. Um, but yeah, it is, uh, it is definitely a good thing to talk to a professional about because while the internet and all of the relatable content is great and it can be useful to kind of give you an idea of, oh, hey, maybe this is something I should investigate in terms of ADHD, um, it is definitely not like the end-all be-all. And it's very easy to kind of like buy into a narrative of like, oh, hey, here's a reason why things are so hard for me right now. Um, this will solve all of my problems and because that's like kind of a tempting narrative. And it is, um, it's worth, it's something that is worth hashing out properly with somebody that is trained to do that. We are going into another instance. <clears throat> Where can you get the Fiery Moonkin? Tindril Sage Swift in the latest raid, Amir Drissel. Can I have an advice for something? How can I meet a partner if I have no social connections? Keep my phone in the closet. Oh, man. Um... I don't think I have anything productive to say. <laughs> I don't think I have anything helpful to add. I am the farthest thing from a dating coach that you can possibly imagine. Um, it's it's like a miracle that it happened for me. <laughs> no hardcore today? Maybe later. Um, maybe later. I'm just starting a new mount run because I finished I finished the last one. Yeah, dating apps and websites have their pros and cons. <sighs> they have their pros and cons. And I don't want to say another word about it. <laughs> uh, I did get the mount. I did. I am a proud owner of shark bait. Ooh ha ha. Get the help. Mm. Pro, you theoretically get to meet people. Con, some of those people suck. <clears throat> yeah. And the... It's impossible to kind of separate as well dating apps and dating websites from the modern dating landscape. I haven't been in the modern dating landscape, mind you. Um, like, I tripped and fell in love because I'm, like, lucky or something. <laughs> but the... Um, what I understand from other people's reports is that because all of this dating activity has moved into these into these online spheres, 
people are not 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 receptive but like it is less acceptable and less appropriate for you to approach somebody that is just like in public i would be very uncomfortable if somebody approached me to date that was just in public it's kind of a changing landscape um and it's not that there aren't places that you can get to know people and then pursue them romantically and pursue is a, a weird word but you know what i mean um there still are but a lot of a lot of people like are going to look for dates on the apps and outside of the apps they're not looking is my understanding as somebody that is not part of this space so i could be a hundred percent wrong <sighs> um the the drawback i think i can't speak to the apps because i've never done that i've heard that those have a lot of drawbacks and being very image focused people being very disposable very much the lfg of dating um, the thing that I did use once upon a time was more like dating websites where you fill out like a more complete long form profile, um, kind of a, something that talks a lot more about you and your interests and what you're like and stuff. And the good news about that is that you can learn more about somebody before you decide to meet them. But the, the problem, especially if you end up, um, meeting people, and I'm not talking about any one person in particular, cause I had a couple of relationships through these websites. The problem with that is that especially if it's like, a, a distance thing as it often turns out to be because by the time that you found that person that you're like oh hey this is kind of cool chances are they do not live up the road um like it's uh, all those websites especially if they're more niche interest websites have a tendency you're gonna end up speaking with someone that lives farther away um by the time that you've gone on a couple of dates you might be really excited about it but it's you there's a lot more pressure on you to overlook um anything that might um anything that might feel a little bit off there's a lot of checks where you might have had outs in like a normal relationship of being like oh you know this is great but i'm not so sure about this thing whereas you know you've you've, you've gone on a six hour trip you've taken a flight they've taken a flight to see you you're gonna overlook that thing and just try to have a nice time and you're gonna get caught up in all of like the the chemicals and the romance of the whole thing and you may not be able to reckon with those things until much later um, again, not speaking about any one particular relationship because I had a few of them and there was sort of a common thread in a couple of them. Um, but it, you end up in deeper earlier and that can be great and that can also lead to some problems down the road. Um, uh, so just, uh, what is my advice? I don't have advice. <laughs> that was just a thought that I had about the process. <sighs> mm. brain's filling in a lot of blanks you can't know them that well exactly yeah um, and it's not like you need somebody to be perfect <laughs> to have a, a nice life with them <sighs> i watched the cutest movie um last night it was called plus one it was like a rom-com but i actually enjoyed the whole thing it was very funny and it was and i liked it we'll, we'll leave it it was one of the netflix ones <laughs> right person becomes that perfect right person over time yeah yeah i i can't dispense any more dating advice because it's just gonna be so full of my own biases from my own life that does not necessarily apply to other people it's so hard not to fall into that trap you know <laughs> watching netflix again yeah yeah i well i was gonna say i'm watching netflix with my partner because it's something that we do together and that is true but i also recently put it back on my computer so i could watch it while i'm playing classic um, dungeon difficulty. Oh no, we're not doing that. We're doing Elephant. That's right. Do you have the rare mog sets from Argus? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. X Arthur, thank you very much for the 21 month race of Hi Hazel. Hope you're having a great morning. <laughs> I can give out dating advice instead of you. Watching Netflix while playing hardcore, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Or like listening to Netflix while playing hardcore. Because I am just grinding, man. I am just going out there and killing tall striders and skinning them. And uh, that is the kind of activity that lends itself well to having a musical playing on the other monitor. <laughs> but if I do, if I die, it's like totally my fault. Um, I, if I died, I would have 100% deserved it. I haven't died yet. We're, we're still kicking. How's my instance lockout looking? SI show. Uh, seven with 23 minutes. So we are gonna hit an instance cap at some point here. Um, bio drink, gates of hell. What level are you now? 19. We hit 19 yesterday. We are one level shy of 
aspect of the cheetah. Oh. Hardcore so dead. It's, um, I'm not mad about it because it's not important to my own game that other people be playing, especially with self-fan. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter to me if there's the auction or whatever, but like, it is so dead compared to what it used to be. It is, it is a little bit jarring. Uh, I can see that wolf cloud. I can see it just fine. Spent an hour on the phone with my wireless internet company trying to log into either account. Combine them so I stop having two accounts ready to nap for the rest of the dead. <laughs> Holy Freudian slip. Oh, I'm so sorry. That sounds so draining. <clears throat> Thinking of getting back in with this weekend? By all means. I'm not saying no one should play it. I'm just saying that it's quiet out there. You know, it's a, it's it, there's there's people around, but it is not the same level of activity that it once had, which is totally fine. But um, I think you should. I'm having a blast getting back into it. But if that enjoyment is contingent on other people being around, then you will have a shock. <laughs> Don't mind the solitude. Yeah. If anything, there's fewer people that are, like, um, getting you into trouble by either dragging mobs past you that are then, like, um, a bit spooky when they're leashing or, um, you know, when there's, like, a lot of activity in an area and then things start hyper-spawning and you're, like, in there. Um, there's less of that when you're the only person in an area that you have a little bit more control over what's going on. Folks are split. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think that SOD has taken a lot, like, a lot of the classic... The people that were playing Hardcore Classic last time are enjoying SOD too much to go back in. Plan on running this normal heroic mythic? Just LFR? Just LFR, I think. Um, if I later decide I want to farm it harder, I would probably add any other difficulties. But, like, this is just so easy um, that 17 LFRs a week, I feel like, is an appropriate amount for me to be farming this. Especially because I'm not in, like, a huge hurry to get the mount, because then I'm just going to have to come up with another mount run. <laughs> um... So I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. It's starting to be too many dang versions of WoW. Ain't that the truth. There we go. So much fun at Hardcore till I died at 45 to a disconnect. Oh no. Oh, I can't get an SOD, but I love Hardcore. Yeah, that's me. And I think that we're definitely the, the exception and not the rule, but that's all right. What was the first instance mount that you farmed? That's a great question. I wonder if I have any way to f answer that. Because I don't remember. <laughs> I've been I've been playing since 2009. Um, and I don't remember much from then. I, I cleared those memories out to make space for... Uh, dog pictures. Um, I wonder if in my feats of strength... Mounts. What are the early dates from here? So in 2000 and... Uh, two th well, okay. <laughs> I apparently got Headless Horseman and my Brewfest mount in 2010. Um, in 2011, I got the Swift White Hawks Rider from Kael'thas. And I remember I did farm that. Um, I didn't farm it for long. I got kind of lucky, but I did farm that. So I was doing mount runs as early as 2011. Um, all the things wouldn't have retroactive date data. I think this is as good as we're going to get. Uh, Raven Lord, no, that was an accident. Riven Dares, I didn't get until 2015. <sighs> I am not the OG Mount Farmer. I'm sure there's, there's, there's lots of people that both have way more mounts than me. Um, Annie comes to mind. I think she has, like, almost everything. If not everything. But, uh... Yeah, people have been doing it for, for ages. What am I going to do once I hit my instance cap? I don't really want to do any more big digs. <laughs> kind of want to do a Hearthstone Battleground, but I don't want to like jump categories too much. I guess I could do a little bit of hardcore. What's the point of doing a little bit of hardcore? <laughs> what if I just do 10 runs um, every day and then I do, do something else for the rest of the day? Like we don't go back after after we hit instance cap, but then we do the rest of the runs on tomorrow's stream. Any pet traps? Mm, no pet traps. I just get little bits of anima. Oh 
yeah, I was about to log out, but I'm going to Dollar Run. That's right. <sighs> Still new kitten, keeps jumping. 10 months. Halfway up the back of my chair, climbing to the top startles me every time. Aww. <laughs> Your kitten is just about the same age as my moosey. Moose is, moose is just about 10 months old. Do you have a favorite plushie toy? She's not so much with the toys since she stopped being able to see them. Um, she, I think her favorite plushie is me. <laughs> her favorite plushie is me when I'm wearing something fuzzy. We're going to the gates of hell. Uh, yeah, I can bring this character back to Bastion because her Hearthstone is set to the the Kyrian Order Hall or Kyrian Covenant Hall or whatever in Earth we call them. Uh, Annie must have a YouTube channel. I I um is mainly aware of her stream, but I think she variety streams now. I haven't looked recently. We ran into somebody that uh, had seen, like, ha that somebody that saw Moose when he was very young. And uh, it was like, oh, wow, is he a year old? He looks a year old. No, not yet. <laughs> Getting there. He's he's nine, nine, nine months right now. Oh, wow, he's getting big. He's a big, beautiful baby boy. Love the rainbow toy. Haven't been able to justify the gold for myself, though. <laughs> he looks a year heavy. He, let me be clear. He's not chunky. He's just dense. He doesn't even look that heavy. Like, when you see him, you wouldn't guess that he weighed 70 pounds. And actually, I don't know how many pounds he weighs, because we haven't had him weighed in, like, a month or more. Um, he doesn't look like he's super heavy. I don't think. It's just that if he jumps on you... And he's actually very good. Sometimes I'll be sitting on the couch, and he'll leap, and I'll be like, I'm about to die. And he'll leap over me. Like, he's quite good about not landing on you. He'll, he'll, he'll like clear you basically to go leap over you and then sit on the couch next to you um it's terrifying but he's it's surprisingly good <laughs> um but if he does land on you in any way or he just like steps on you you're like oh <laughs> Ooh. how are kira and the doggy getting along this is getting much calmer um about her she still seems to really hate him um so it's just a question of getting to the point where he can be cool all the time and not just some of the time which is kind of a big ask, but he's doing really well. He recently had an episode where Miss Kira approached him. She came through the gate to his side. I opened the gate for her because she looked like she wanted to come in. And she like walked up to the dog and like sniffed around. But then once she sniffed that it was the dog, she was like, ew, gross. And she like hissed a bunch of times and then like turned around and left. But that whole time that she was like walking up to him and then like sniffing him, Moose stayed laying down in his bed. He was, like, vibrating, and he kept, like, checking on us and, like, looking at her and being like, guys, what do I do? It's happening! But he did not jump up and try to play with her, which was a big deal for him. I was very proud of him. Um, he got he got a real yummy treat for that. <laughs> Hope you get him weight again. Need to know when he hits 100. The joke's been going on for too long. I need to, at some point, when I get back on top of my life, get him back to get him weighed and get him, um... I need to just stop by the vet to get a, get a weight update done, so... He is now big enough that it is no longer feasible to do the weigh yourself and then weigh yourself holding the dog thing because it's kind of unsafe to just deadlift the dog off the floor. <laughs> and um, my home scale seems kind of inaccurate at those numbers anyways. Um, I have not been hearing any stories from Tasmania about Neil the Seal. What's, who's Neil the Seal? Grandpa had a 120 pound golden retriever. Run at you at top speed, spin his tail like a rudder to slow down and still knock you down. <sighs> Maybe one day she will realize he's a warm cuddle partner. Yeah, that's what my partner keeps. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. Uh, keeps saying is that if she, if she just gives him a chance and she finds out he's warm and soft, because I think he just wants to love her. Um, he's a really sweet boy, and he just seems to think that she's a funny dog that he just really wants to play with. But failing that, he seems like he would really enjoy a nice cuddle. But she seems to think that he is stinky. <laughs> Which is fair. Um, she got along okay with uh, the last dog that she lived with, but she never liked him. She just kind of made peace with the fact that he lived there. <laughs> Kira's a pretty funny dog. <laughs> oh, man. I had to commit another crime against dog toys last night because um, Moose was on this side of the fence kind of spending some time with uh, with Kira and with us. 
under supervision and he pretty quickly lost interest in the cat and just went to like go fish his toys out from where I have them confiscated because every time that he like punctures a toy I like remove it so that I can like repair it which I've never done um in my mind I'm going to and in practice I've never done it <laughs> pardon me um but anyways I have a big stash of like plush dog toys that have various critical injuries and he like was kind of like pulling them out and like taking them back to his various beds and I told him he could pick one to retrieve and then I was just gonna like cut off the offending part so that he couldn't rip it to shreds and then eat the eat the threads um and he picked his duck with a rope out at the bottom and I cut off the wings because he had like really punctured the wings pretty badly and they were like coming apart so I de-winged this duck and it is now a um doesn't fly so good anymore. We're going to check on my instance lockout, actually. There's a seal that keeps lumbering around town, being a troll, blocking traffic, and playing with traffic cones! Aww! Brutal. You want to see it? I have a prop to support this story. So yeah, the, the, the general trend with the dog toys is that when a limb or something becomes critically injured, I will just remove it altogether so that he doesn't like consume it because he has in the past removed and then consumed like little legs off toys. So this is a little moose that my sister got him for Christmas because she didn't know how big the moose was when she bought it. Um, it, it no longer has any back legs, so it's it's a little bit, you know, might need, might need a little bit of a little bit of mobility assistance, but um, other held up okay it's a, it's ears and its uh, antlers are still attached this this arm is going for sure <laughs> um, so that's one this guy which was supposed to be ultra tough um, gained a hole in the critical um, unfortunate location um, I think he's trying to get the squeaker out as some dogs do because that's right there I'm not gonna squeak it because he's gonna go cr crazy um, but yeah this was one of his Christmas presents that lasted about eight seconds it didn't even it didn't even lose this because he went right for the um, weak point uh this poor thing lived a long time he had this when he was a little baby puppy and this lived like with him actually for a long time but then it eventually became um uh lobotomized um which you know based on this expression might have happened a while ago but uh that one did pretty good and if i can just if i just like patch that back up i bet it would live a little longer the trick now i've discovered is that i have to play with him with the toys and then remove them as soon as we're done otherwise he'll just go chew on them and like rip them to shreds i just can't let him do that but that's his favorite part and then um this thing uh lived a little has lived a little longer it's got a little bit of a hole in its nose i don't really know what to do with that it's one of those crinkly ones so there's a plastic layer under here that's causing the crinkling but the problem is that he'll tear that plastic out and then i'm afraid he's gonna eat the pieces because he does eat stuff and then also this used to have ears and now he kind of looks like he's run afoul of the mob. Um, he, he, no, he no longer has ears because, um, yeah. So there's that. He likes this one. And then uh, here is the, uh, the duck in question <laughs> with the rope. He's been kind of trimming the rope, which is concerning, but they're small pieces at least. Ugh. And then, uh, yeah, it used to have wings, but then the wings became a hazard. So now it is more of a um, football. Hasn't punctured the beak yet, though. He's working on it. <laughs> Oh, he punctured that part, though, because, um, yeah, the squeaker's in there and there's stuffing coming out. So, yeah, that is that is why I took that away. That's right. <laughs> All right. Do, 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 do. The problem is he loves these things, but they're really expensive and he kills them immediately. It's like 30 bucks a toy and they die within like five minutes. Like Moose is just really good at destroying and it's his favorite thing to do. So the only toys that he like has handy that he's allowed to actually like keep on him and play with at his own leisure. Here, we can do one more instance and then I'll find something else to do. Is um, like his rubber toys that he hasn't managed to damage. Uh, so he's got squeaky toys and he's got balls and he loves his balls. He loves balls when he's inside. When there's dogs around, you couldn't care less. <laughs> Surgeon Moose with surgical precision. Pup made it a point to remove any squeakers. I think that it's just kind of, I think that these kind of little toys sort of like trigger their ancestral instinct to dismember small prey, basically. Like if they had a small prey animal that they had caught, the next step would be to pull it apart and then you would be to eat it, right? Like that's, that's kind of the instinct. Um, so I think that's what he's trying to do. 
He's just really good at it. Uh, Wailing Halls. He has like a specific motion that he has perfected. Not Wailing Halls, pardon me. Gates of Hell. I've done that before and it's a mistake. Um, leave gear. <laughs> Where he has like a spot in his back molars that he will, he will very precisely wedge the thing that he's trying to puncture. And then he will shear his teeth back and forth in a pulsing motion um, in order to shear through this fabric. It's really impressive. It is highly destructive. Um, it's he's, he's real good at that. All right, this is my last instance because we are about to hit our instance limit. Sounds like my German Shepherd when she gets new toys. Uh, one of those things is by Kong. <laughs> and yes, $30 Canadian before tax. That's why they made squeaky toys, supposed to sound like small animals, lends itself further to that ancient instinct, yeah. <sighs> I don't even think my dad's dog has toys. Not all dogs are toy dogs. Not all dogs like toys. Uh, my last dog had very passing interest in them and wasn't so much concerned about it. But Moose really likes him. I just, nowadays, I have to, especially if it's like a tug toy, um, I need to take it away when we're not actively playing, otherwise he'll just lay down and tear it to pieces. Carnassial teeth, literally, arranged like scissors. <laughs> and we scrub them every night. <laughs> They're all shiny. He's got such pretty teeth. If you said your last dog was stressed out by toys, I would have believed it. He was a tightly wound one. Um, I think he just mo mainly didn't really get the point of them. He didn't really know what to do with them. Uh, he didn't. He didn't just. He just didn't really have an interest. <laughs> I still miss him. That's life. Yeah, that was Joker the Cleek guy. Hmm. I went for my walk with Masu this morning. And he really went quite quickly. I think it's because we walked really late. Um, so it was kind of less busy around because I feel like a lot of people had already gone to work. Uh, because I slept in so much. But he really like power walked through it. I appreciated it. <laughs> I could have been a lot later if Musa decided to uh, plant. I wonder if um after I do this mat run if I can if I, I can check and see where the cat is and maybe pull Moosey in here for a visit. Oh no, kitty cat. She she just walked in the door. Uh, looking at getting a click guy. The shelter I talked to said they're naturally very anxious dogs. Get very attached to one person. Remember what you said about your last dogs? Like oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is it to a T, and it's certainly something that can be managed and worked with. Um, he was a wonderful dog. It was life crippling though; like it was it was a genuine real problem. <sighs> I'm so happy. Moosey is doing really. He doesn't love it when we're both out and one of us splits off to like go into a store, which is something that we do sometimes because we'll kind of bring him with us when we're walking to go shopping. Um, he doesn't love that because he's like, "Wait, where are you going? Why can't I go with you?" Um, but if we're both going out and we leave him at home, he, he will kind of wait by the door for a while, but he, he'll then just kind of like, all right, fine, I'm going back to bed. Um, he'll just go sleep, which is such a relief from somebody that used to have a very anxiety, uh, uh separation anxiety based dog. Um, it is very nice that he can, he can kind of deal on his own for a while. It goes better when you do it at certain times of day. I think he would be more upset about the whole business if he was like missing a walk or something so like we make sure that we've like taken care of everything for him first but then he'll just you know be like all right fine i got a nap see you uh i got some transmog i didn't have before but i did not get the mail <laughs> mommy and daddy went in different directions that was concerning joker used to scream bloody murder when when we tried that once um like it was it was a real problem. <laughs> mm. Ended up adopting a different pup. A week later, someone adopted her. I hope she's doing well. Aww, I hope so too. I still think of all the doggies that I was like tracking when I was looking to adopt a dog that I didn't end up getting. I still think about them and I like kept track of their profiles until they all went off of their various sites because I wanted to make sure that someone got them. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do about it. I could only have the one dog. Um, but I, I kept tabs on them because I really wanted, I really wanted them to go home to somebody because they seem like wonderful dogs. I mean, they're all wonderful dogs. But. Um, okie dokie, on to the SI show. 
We are locked out for another three minutes. We could do another run in another three minutes. I have done two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven runs so far. Meaning that there are six runs left that I could do. Miss Kira has wandered out again. I think I'm going to take my break. And I'm going to investigate whether or not I might be able to have Moosey in to visit. I'm no guarantees. Um, but I will take a look at it. I will take a look at it. Uh, English, please. English. I'm going to go have a great day. Thanks, Mr. Sonic Jen. Mm. Aww. I, I absolutely have really come around at small dogs. I used to be prejudiced against the really small ones because I had only known yappy and poorly socialized ones, but I have met some really sweet ones and I now believe that, that you know, doggies are doggies. <clears throat> um, speaking of which, I'm going to be right back. Okay, let's see if I can do this properly. We'll see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go let him back to his room, but I'm glad you guys got to see him. Let's, this goes more, more up here. <laughs> All right. Um, I bet we can fit in one more mount run. I think that our instance lock will be out up in just a second. <laughs> Big puppy. Why did you get such a tiny dog? Yeah, he's. I think he's gonna grow a little more because he's like, like I said, kind of nine, ten months old, and large dogs will usually grow a little longer than that um but i think he's probably most of his adult frame at least <laughs> uh, thanks for the guest appearance hope to have you back on the show soon for your new book tour mm. yeah we're back down to nine <sighs> yeah musimo is necessary for sure <laughs> hmm Chromie's all excited to see the doggy on screen. Such a handsome dog. Why, thank you. I know I've said this before and it's like a given, but I love him so much. <laughs> He's the best. He's such a good boy. He is, don't get me wrong. He is a teenage husky mix. Um, he's like a, his, his primary breeds are German Shepherd, Malamute, and then Husky. Those are the three highest entries on his 14 long breed list. But um, he is a stubborn teenager. If he doesn't want to do something, good luck getting him to do it. Um, he will see your offer and he will consider it. <laughs> He's, um, he, is, he is a stubborn, excited puppy. He's full of beans. He is sometimes difficult, but he's at his core 
a sweetheart. He is so sweet and loving and friendly. And all of his urges that are competing with his desire to listen to you are like, I want to go say hi to that dog. I want to say hi to that person. Do you think I could lick their hand? <laughs> you know, like things that you need him to not necessarily do every time. But, you know, he's not, he's just, he's, he's a real sweetie. Um, which, and, I, and I love him a bit. Gates of Hell? Gates of Hell. Hi, kitty cat. Welcome back. <laughs> Does Moose react to the changing hair? I thought he might, like, give me a side eye the first time I showed him myself wearing a wig, but he does not care. <laughs> I don't think he gives, he gives, I don't think he cares. I think he just thinks that mom wears funny hats. Yeah, yeah, wig is for, wig is for stream and exclusively stream. Uh, stream and then recording, like, the news video. But if I'm not on camera, I'm not wearing the wig. I take it off the second stream is over. <laughs> Thanks for sharing him, so precious. Curious, <laughs> like, he's been in here again, hasn't he? <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi. He's a good boy, I promise. You just give him a chance. Give him like 13 chances, just in case, because he's a baby. <laughs> he's a big baby, but he's a baby. You'll like him. What's it looking like under there these days? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty scruffy. I've been, I've been letting it get kind of scruffy to see if I like any version of it that is like still short, but more grown out than buzzed. Um, and I'm reserving judgment on it right now. Mm. Um, did I do Mage Tower for Warrior? I don't think so. I think I managed to do all seven of them without doing any on Warrior. <laughs> Besides, I feel cute with my short hair. Um, I feel cool. I think I look good. But occasionally, when I show myself with short hair on the internet, people say things that are insulting or not in good faith. Not always. Most of you are lovely and sweet and wonderful. But occasionally someone will say something kind of caustic. And I just don't need that. <laughs> I just don't need that. So I'm going to keep the wig on. I am reserving my short hair for the real world where nobody has yet to try to roast me for having short hair. I know those people suck. I just am trying not to uh, wake them up so I don't have to look at them. You know what I mean? <laughs> <clears throat> but I like it. <sighs> Water Goddess of Six, thanks for the 33 month reset. Appreciate it very much. Do you think this is going to be the mount run? Yeah, in my face in public. In my mind, if anyone said anything uncomfortable to me in public, I could just kind of, like, I don't know. <laughs> when people, I feel like when people, and this hasn't happened to me a whole lot, because like I said, I'm, I'm an absolute hermit, I don't really talk to people. But when it has happened in my life that people have been saying things that are, like, obviously rude or whatever, I have always found it kind of effective to just kind of let them say it, and then instead of like engaging with it or taking it in good faith just let it sit there in the air and it becomes like really obvious how dumb it is um also I'm, don't mind me just walking down the street <sighs> uh, but in practice i don't i don't know if it would work so well i'm sorry that people were unkind to you that's not very nice hmm. thoughts on what the pirate patch is going to be this month uh, a letdown is about where I'm at right now emotionally. <laughs> I think that whatever it's going to be, we have fully let our expectations overcook. And we are, we are going to be disappointed with whatever it is. Because it is, at the end of the day, a 0. .6 patch. Or 0. .7, I don't know what number we're on. It's a minor patch. And my expectations, at least, have ceased to be minor in size. Because it's just been so long of not knowing. Um, so I'm, uh, I don't know my hopes of <laughs> No luck there. Don't get me wrong, I'll play it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quitting. I don't have a problem. I don't even, I'm not even necessarily against the whole keeping a secret thing. I'm excited to see how it turns out. But like, um, I think that the timeline maybe a little too long too 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 dragged out i think that i think that if they were going to do this i think it would have been ideal if they'd spit it out like two weeks ago um let's see but 
you know, it's their it's their game. It's their 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 own prerogative on how they want to release news. They're I'm sure collecting data. I'm sure collecting feedback, figuring out what is best for them to do. By all means, have at it. So we can do another one of these. <laughs> Fairly partial to short hair. Mm. A few defining memories from youth of particularly attractive actresses that sported short hair. Mm. I have never played RuneScape. Am I the only one that just noticed? Did they put an Azerothian archives vendor at the Big Dig site? This is the first I'm hearing about it. Drenai Lady sells the Mog. <gasps> Game saved. Magical. That's actually awesome. It used to be more of a balance between secrecy and information. Yeah, I think it might be good. I'm... I'm somewhat, and ironically as a content creator, I'm somewhat of the persuasion that, in general, as a community, because we've gotten so used to a steady drip of news, this whole idea that there will be regular news, the idea that someone like me has a weekly news show about a game that was published 20 years ago, is has kind of like warped our expectations to the point where we feel entitled to to know about what's next whereas at the end of the day what we're paying for and what we've purchased and what we're paying a sub fee for is the stuff that's already come out like they don't necessarily owe us anything more um and then of course we always have the right to stop paying for a sub and like dip out and then come back or not come back as we choose uh i think that like the the i don't know it's gotten a little bit wonky but they uh they, they're going to do what they're going to do. And it is certainly in their best interest to not alienate their audience, even if our expectations have gotten a little bit um, wacky. Where are we going? Get the hell. They put it in last reset. That's cool. That's a great change. <laughs> uh, hate all the data mining and spoilers. Like to be excited Christmas morning. Yeah, I feel that. I think that's what a lot of people loved so much about when Season of Discovery first came out. Like, that was the whole, the whole thing. Why it was so awesome. Hmm. But, um, I am obviously biased. I am a content creator. I am a full-time content creator. I make my rent payment off of making videos and streams talking about everything before it comes out. Because that's when people want to talk about it. After it comes out... It is no longer as as exciting of a talking point um, amongst a lot of people. So, like, I make my living off it when I do. So, I am fully biased in this conversation. <sighs> However, if they decided that they wanted to move back to a more old-fashioned model of "it'll be done when it's done," you'll find out what it is when it's out. Then, um, then I would, I suppose, adjust my content to be something else. Okay, off we go. I did get the freehold mount this week. I haven't posted the stream VOD yet. I was a bit of a mess yesterday. Um, I need to both post, the, post the VOD and cut the highlight, but I did get shark bait. DVK Joe, thank you very much. Five gift subs. Holy moly, appreciate it. Hope you've been doing well. Happy with the release date, some hype. I think that a release date, just a release date, would go a long way towards calming people in general like uh, i was reading through like five pages of wowhead comments because i hate myself apparently um on like uh on this topic and i think that I'll, like it wouldn't make everybody happy but just knowing when to expect it would go a long way and i think the fact that we've come this far and we don't have a release date maybe indicates that the development of this patch has not gone to their plans because i can't imagine that this was their plan to drag it out for this long um i feel like they ended up needing more time but, I don't know. Hey, I needed that appearance. Thanks. Mm. Honey One Games, thanks for the 33 month resub. Hey, hi, hello. Happy 33 months. Still standing as my favorite Twitch streamer. Aww. Much love to you, Miss Kira and Mr. Moose. Why, thank you. Less news about community stuff, too. Really curious about player numbers. I think it's, um, I think they don't like releasing player number data because it becomes so such a talking point every time like they would really only want to share that if um if they thought it was good press so anytime that you know people love jumping on anything that backs up their own view that wow is dying which people feel emotionally you know inclined to adopt because of a lot of reasons 
Um, so I feel like they're less likely to want to say that numbers are down unless they're like obligated to like a shareholder meeting or something. Um, people just really want to support their own preconceptions. How are you doing today? Still cold on the West Coast? Yeah, a little chilly. We had snow yesterday. <laughs> um, it was a little, a little nicer out today. I'm doing good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, people, people always love a good WoW is dying narrative, especially if somebody has decided that for themselves they are done with it, which is totally fine and healthy and not a problem with it, but sometimes somebody will decide that they're done with it, and then they then need everybody else to also be done with it to reinforce their decision that that was the right thing and to help them not feel FOMO for not playing everything that's still happening while they're gone. They want to leave, and then they want it to burn behind them so they're not missing out on anything. So people will pursue any data that backs up that viewpoint that it's basically over um we're gonna leave the instance at least that is my conjecture well oh, thanks harry babes people complain too much i love the game if i started it i would just not play don't have to ruin it for everyone who does like it and that's a very mature viewpoint <sighs> Alas, we cannot, we cannot change people's minds because <laughs> that's not what the internet's for. And if somebody needs that, hang on, I need to sell those, don't I? Yeah. If somebody wants or needs that emotional validation that comes from tearing down something like WoW Online, then, you know, power to them. I can just not look at it. It's not like I need to defend, you know, Daddy Blizzard. They're a company. They're not, they don't have feelings. It is, it's not something that I need to be personally identified in defending or attacking, you know? It's just a thing that exists that makes money. <sighs> uh, 4K. <laughs> I am online to change people's minds about microwaves. <laughs> if I didn't stream WoW for my job, would you still be playing WoW? That's an interesting question. I don't know. That's a solid maybe. Um, there's definitely been times when I've been playing WoW on stream, but only on stream. And off stream, I've been playing basically exclusively other games. But it usually kind of cycles based on the season. I think I would be a more seasonal player kind of coming back from like Mythic Plus seasons and raid tiers and stuff. But it would be really hard for me to walk away from my guild because I really like playing with my guild. Dungeon oh yeah, that's right. We were going to check on the instant lockout. We do. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We can go do it. I heard that Stardew's getting a patch. I didn't see what was on it, though. Oh, honey bun, that sucks. I'm sorry that happened. <laughs> no microwaves. Macrowaves only. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Hmm. I, not to get too excited about it because it could fall apart at any moment, have been on kind of a kick of actually cooking and then cooking enough for leftovers and then having leftovers and like not ordering takeout and not eating frozen prefab food. And I'm really proud of myself and I've been feeling much better for it. Wowie. Um, not getting too excited about it because every time I'm like, oh man, I'm cured. I'm going to live the rest of my life like a paragon of virtue. Uh, it all falls apart like immediately. But I had a good week, and I'm celebrating that. I've been making and eating curries and chilies, and I did tacos. I've got the ingredients for my famous sweet potato sandwiches and some dumplings, and I was going to do sushi bowls. I need to do that sooner rather than later because I've got this cucumber that i got to eat. Uh, get your help. <clears throat> yes, you should. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just constantly in flux about my own belief of what is possible for me to do and achieve. And my own beliefs in that category fluctuate wildly. It is very rarely, I believe that I'm going to do an average amount of success. It's either I believe that I can do nothing or I believe that I can do everything. There's not, there's not a lot of gray area and that's something that I'm working on. Um, but my self-belief is usually propelled by my own recent experiences. So when I've been having a bad brain week and I haven't gotten very much done, I'm like, oh no, this is the rest of my life. I will never be functional. This is, this is what I have to live with. And then as soon as I have a good week and I like kind of catch up on a bunch of stuff, I'm like, great, I'm functional. I'm going to do all of this work and make millions of dollars. And I'm going to live in a palace with 14 dogs, a snail, and a crab named Jacques. Um, 
and there's there's really no room in my brain or imagination for a middle ground at this time. <laughs> uh, rats on shark bit very happy for you. Thank you. Mm. Finished chorizo breakfast plates. Ha ha ha. Partner's been on this money saving kick. His current fixation breaking down whole chickens because they're seven dollars at my work. I think that's too much effort. Hey, if he's doing it, power to him. How many water features? Oh, you got you found my weakness. I love water features. I don't know if they're practical because I've never had one because I'm not that rich. I guess I you know what? I have an indoor freshwater aquarium. That is a water feature. Um, but you you know what I mean? Like little like stone waterfalls that just like come out of the floor. Uh, I feel like my dog would drink out of it. <laughs> I love them. They're so stupid. I love them. You want to be the little mermaid, right? <laughs> a waterfall that flows into an indoor river garden. I have decided to back away from online diagnoses. These are all things that I'm sharing with a professional, so rest assured it's in good hands. If I'm going to be extra, I'd like to be extra with that. Waterfall from the second or third floor would be amazing. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't eat chicken, but a $7 whole chicken sounds like a great deal. <laughs> that sounds like a really efficient way, especially if it's, like, good quality and you can cook nice things with it. That's a great way to get protein. Hit 10 million golden wow for the first time, and I feel good about that. Elrithir, congratulations! I didn't realize you were rich. Holy moly. Sploosh. Hmm. Do you have a favorite brand of chicken replacement? To be honest with you, I haven't really been replacing. It's not something that I that I had. <laughs> I I became a pescatarian when I was eight, so it's not like there was a chicken shaped void in my life that I needed to replace. I just kind of eat food. Um, I do occasionally nowadays make um, the odd thing with like Beyond Meat, but whenever I do it, I'm like, I should do this less. This did not make me feel great. Like it's it's tasty sometimes, but it is also kind of expensive and kind of salty and not like. I don't know. It's fine. It's it's a it's a once in a while thing for me. Um, but I like I don't know. I like making things with legumes and with pulses, uh, lentils and beans and chickpeas. I like um, I like making things just with like sweet potatoes, greens. I don't know. Food, <laughs> all the veggies, uh, cheese. I don't think I would eat lab grown meat. Not because of any ethical considerations, but just because it sounds like kind of gross. <laughs> it doesn't sound like something that makes me feel hungry. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, far be it for me. What are we doing? We're leaving. My hands are freezing. I should get my hand warmers back up. Mm. Leave instant screw. <laughs> so many lab grown fungi to eat. Yeah, which bizarrely enough sounds tastier. Like what's up with that? <laughs> Hand warmers. Miss cheese? Yeah. I do I do love I do love cheese and I feel very grateful that I am able to digest it. At least at this point in my life. I know that kind of thing can change, but I can tolerate cheese just fine. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the way that people think about food and the way that people think about and I think it's just, like, what's normal to you. There's nothing right or wrong with this. I'm not, like, trying to roast anybody. But one person once asked me, and if you're still here, I want to say that I found this to be funny and not, like, offensive in any way. One person once asked me, since you're a pescatarian, how do you cope with all of the mercury that you get from eating fish every single meal? <laughs> and that struck me as so funny because, of course, I don't eat fish every single meal. Just because you can eat something doesn't mean that you do it regularly, but a lot of people that are used to a diet in which protein means meat and that means having it with every meal, um, just it just doesn't compute that you might have something that has other forms of protein. Or that maybe the, maybe one meal doesn't have protein and the next meal has more, you know, maybe it balances out. 
or maybe it doesn't and you're just anemic like you know like sometimes sometimes life happens what are we doing i'm looking for my dollar on hearthstone um dollar on hearthstone <laughs> but that genuinely killed me it was so funny <sighs> now we know what the aquariums are really for <laughs> Many people nage eat fish for breakfast. Yo, I eat, I've, I've eaten fish for breakfast. I I can get down with a smoked salmon eggs, Benny. Although that is a very Western version of eating fish for breakfast. But seriously, salmon, eggs, yum. Uh, something that was hard for you to not eat. Don't think I could ever not eat hamburgers. Um, When I was a kid, because that was when I did this. Um, I remember the thing that I missed because I was like eight was pepperoni. Because pepperoni pizza was a thing that I liked when I was eight. And then I was like, well, if I'm not eating meat, I can't be like, I mean, I could, but I decided not to be like, I'm a vegetarian except for pepperoni because I knew that my family would like rip me for that. So I had to leave behind pepperoni. And, uh, you know, I got over it. <laughs> it's not something that continues to bother me to this day. There is a place that does something called beetastrami here, which is a, they've taken slices of beets and they have, um, and they have seasoned them with the same kind of spices that you would use on like salami or like pepperoni or, you know, like preserved meats kind of thing. And, uh, and then they put it on pizza and it's like, it's not a health food, but it's surprisingly good. Gates of hell. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, the animal product substitutes are definitely not for everybody. Yesterday learned that some places call tofu bean curds. Partner ordered me hot and spicy bean curds. What the heck is a bean curd? Oh, it's just tofu. Weird. People do review for that stuff. Yeah, people get very sensitive and sometimes defensive and sometimes projecting when it comes to food and diet. It's a very tricky topic um, because people will sometimes take your choices personally because they feel like you're judging them or they want to feel like they have some kind of you know, internal struggle about their own food choices and they are dealing with that with defensiveness or, you know, they're just, they just don't get it and they're, and they're very curious. Um, and, or maybe they've encountered people that are very militant and like, uh, proselytizing and, you know, like people that try to convert other people, which is, does not go well um, when it comes to food. And they are defensive because they have encountered people that they feel like have tried to really like shake them down over their choice to have a burger. Um, so sometimes people hear, Things. And also, it's, you know, it does come up every now and then. <laughs> I try not to lead with it, but I'm sure I do mention it more than I absolutely have to. Decided not to talk about diet with anyone except my partner now. Yeah, totally. I feel that. <laughs> the other day, my partner bought some cheese for the vegetarian people at the party, and everyone was like, it's so good. <laughs> I wonder if you mean vegan and it was like a vegan cheese or if it was just regular cheese so that the vegetarians would have something to eat. <laughs> uh, bean burgers can be good. Depending on how they're made, they can be very dry. Um, I have had many a disappointing bean or chickpea burger that was too dry and crumbly. And that's no good. You really have to be careful not to have that happen. Um, or you got to sauce it up with something that, that goes really well with it. Oh, honey bun, that sucks. I still get the, oh, you're still only eating veggies at Thanksgiving. It's been eight years. I don't know why they're surprised. Oh, man. Nowadays, I found, I had the pleasant vindication of, um, when I was younger, it was just me. But the older I got, the more my family members have kind of come around to my way of thinking to the point that a lot of them now eat even fewer animal products than I do. I'm now the lax one for being just a pescatarian. Um, it's, uh, it, it was, uh, and also this city, Victoria, BC, has the most astonishing assortment of, you know, plant-based food and like vegetarian and vegan friendly food. And it's wonderful. It's very nice. It's very refreshing. I no longer live in a world where I only have the option of salad when I go out to eat. Stop judging the people that like dry chicken burgers. I, w I would never. <laughs> <sighs> if 
found a really interesting cheese, a black cheese with a hint of lemon. Interesting. Uh, no, you haven't offended me. I'm just, I just prefer to do these sorts of things on my own. It's just a solo mount run, that's all. I appreciate the offer. It's, it's very kind of you. Oh, Kinley, that really sucks. Oh. Yeah, I really hate it when that kind of thing becomes politicized, as it does in a lot of places, because that just is just a big downhill slope. How do I run the Storm Song Dungeon BFA? The Lord in the Underwater Breathing part. I haven't done that one. I don't know. That's a good question. The Lord in the Underwater Breathing part. Yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. Maybe chat has some ideas. We made it to 10.39. How many attempts have we run here? We've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. This will be 14, meaning that there will be 3 left after this, I think. Hmm. No left in. I won't finish my water. Their bags are just gonna fill up with stuff. I guess I'll just deal with it later <laughs> when it becomes a problem. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing is super not cool. I'm sorry that you dealt with that so recently. Uh, best worm, the one you decided on at the dentist the other day? Yeah, actually it was. I was thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? That's the one that I'm feeling. That's what I feel like doing. Speaking of the dentist, holy moly, they were good. I was in and out of there and I had two things to get done. I had a filling and they also, um, there was a piece of, I have something on my teeth called Fisher sealant and a piece of it was like peeling up. So they needed to grind it off because if it was coming up, then bacteria could get under there and potentially cause cavities. So it needed to come off. Um, they filled my cavity and ground off my Fisher sealant. I was in and out of there in like 24 minutes. It was nuts. They were so good. It was, I, I love that dentist. <laughs> they're, they're amazingly efficient and they did a real good job. Um, it was a pretty small cavity on an easy to access part of the tooth, which I, which I think helped, but like, oh, oh man. <laughs> they also, um, I, they, they numbed, they numbed me up real good, which I appreciate because nobody wants to feel it when you're getting a filling. <laughs> but it was, um, when I was, I was heading home and I was walking for part of it and I walked past somebody that was walking a really cute dog and I like smiled at the dog and I tried to smile at the person too. And then it kind of gave me like a weird look. And then I realized that I was smiling with half of my face and the other half of my face was like Phantom of the Opera potentially drooling a little bit and like not moving because I was so numb. And then I went, oh, that's right. I look, I look wild right now. Oops. <laughs> not that, not that there's anything wrong with, with that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> oh, I ended up uh, taking a nap to try to metabolize it off because I couldn't, I, I was pretty useless. Super fortunate VA dental team is great. <laughs> Probably concerned you were having stroke symptoms. Oh man. I, and when I took a nap, I um, I put in an earplug and I couldn't feel my right ear when I was putting it in. And I was like, oh, I actually don't know if I put that in far enough or too far. I can't feel that. That's freaky. I don't like that at all. <sighs> did, 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 it, did it real good. But I'm happy because I'm now caught up with my fillings and uh, teeth, teeth in good shape. And it made me wonder whether or not it would make me feel any better to know how many fillings the average adult of my age has in their teeth. Because on one hand, if I found out that that many people have like five or six or more fillings, that might make me feel better in that I'm not such a mess. But then on the other hand, I know that like teeth and their integrity is genetic and that my teeth genetically kind of suck and that they're soft and easily, like I get cavities really easily, even though I'm really, I promise I'm, I, I try my very best with my oral hygiene. I put a stunning amount of effort into it. Um, 
I don't know if it would make me feel better because I found out that like most people that were like 31 have like a filling or no fillings. Um, that is going to make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't be seeking self-validation in other people. Maybe I should just brush my teeth, you know, and maybe stay off the pop and try not to worry about it. <sighs> Need to go. I think two of my fillings are busted. Mm. Not your age. Way more than that. Teeth were awful when I was a kid. So many fillings at a crown. Finally caught up on dental work. 42 root canals. Four fillings. All done like 10 plus years ago. Huh. Younger. At least three. Because, yeah, I have at least three um, minimum. Because I remember getting two of them done at once one time in my late 20s. And I remember being like kind of emotionally shocked. Because I was like, wait, what do you mean I have cavities? I brush my teeth every day. I floss my teeth every day. What, what is this? Um... But I must have had at least one or two more before that, because I remember that wasn't my first filling ever. Um, so I feel like I must be somewhere in the five or six range. Maybe, maybe five. I don't know. I can't. Hi, Hazel. Hurry up with the tooth repairing toothpaste stuff. A lot of food that is corrosive. Um, when I was younger, I used to drink black tea with sugar in. And when I switched the sugar for Splenda, I stopped getting cavities. Like, two of my cavities, I directly attributed to that. I don't know if that's true, but that's that was my anecdotal personal experience. Um, but aside from that, I really didn't feel like that was the case. I, I, I know it's, like, rich of me, but I would love to blame my genetics because I'm, I'm not really, like, a like a candy person. I'm not really, like, a pop person. I'm not even, like, a juicer, like, a sugary coffee person on the regular. You should get gold fillings. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I think that it's um, that dental hygiene is really important and diet choice can make a huge difference. And I also think that some of us just lost the genetic lottery. <laughs> Sister brushed so often she brushed the enamel off her teeth. Oh, I've been I've heard that the, it is important to give some time after you eat before you brush, especially if you've been eating something that is acidic, like a coffee or like a soda or whatever. Like, it, you want to brush your teeth to get it off, but if you do it right away, your teeth are weakened by that acid. You don't want to brush them until later. You want to, like, rinse with water and give it some time and, and then brush them kind of situation is what I was hearing. But, um, not a dentist. Do not take dental advice from me or anybody on the internet randomly. Take dent dental advice from your dental professionals. <laughs> Ask them questions and then listen to the things that they tell you. Mm. Three when I was little. Got three more when I was, like, 34. Pretty consistent. Dentist said it's probably the amount of seltzer drink. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's my PSA is listen to your dentist. <laughs> Please trust and listen to the professionals and hope that you get good ones because the internet's a mess. <sighs> I have a kitty cat on my lip. I say as somebody on the internet. Just join stream. It will drop now. I feel it. All right, I'm ready. One of us worm, please. No, but I got a Grimoire of the Abyssal Dark Glare. I did not know that was a thing. That must be new, right? <laughs> sure. Why not? Mm. <clears throat> All right. Got a couple more, uh, couple more chances in. One of the new skins, I think. Yeah, I don't know enough about my warlock to know a skin for what. I didn't know I had a regular dark lair. Uh, three more characters that can run this. <laughs> How low is the drop chance? It's hard to say. Um, we're thinking 1%-ish. It's one of the more commonly owned mounts. It doesn't seem like it should be super rare. Um, one of the reactions that I sometimes get when I mention that I'm farming the Abyss Worm still is, Really? I got that on my first try. I thought that that was 100% drop rate. And those people get side-eyed. Uh, LFR at level 60? Worth a try. I don't see why not. Friend thought that about Necrotic Wake. <gasps> <laughs> that friend would get an earful from me. I don't have that mount. Gates of Hell. I have not got the Antorius mount.
And I'm also not farming it. <sighs> yeah, we should we should be good. We've we've killed enough time today to uh, to time out our instance cap, so we should be fine to finish all this. I think after I'm done my runs, I might do some battlegrounds today. It's either battlegrounds or I go log on to Hearthstone, Cla Hearthstone Hardcore Classic, self found, and look into getting Bite Rank Three for Lola. That's the other thing I could do. Gladly trade my Antorus map for the red prologue. I'm a Havoc Demon Hunter. Farmed ashes for ages. Brother came with me for fun. Oh. Yeah, I know how that one ends. There's stuff that I need transmog wise still. You won't start your Arkham Trilogy playthrough today? Reminded me I need to do my Mythic Mount farming in Legion. Ashes out of the time walking box for killing Yellow. Uh -huh. I heard the ashes and then also Mim's head. Quite a few people got those from the raid time walking boxes. Not like everybody, but like enough people for it to be significant. I've heard you can get invincible from the Lich King box. Always forget to do it. I think that's the first time I've ever disengaged on a Demon Hunter. <laughs> I don't know if I knew that I had that button. I did get the shark bait mount. I got it yesterday. I'll get a clip posted to my VODs channel, my YouTube VODs channel, in the next day or so. It's not up yet, but this is where it will eventually, eventually land. Finally got the tusks of Manoroth after so long. Skip to Garrosh was a blessing. Oh, nice. Started my attempts at soloing Nihilo with the Mythic. Everything but Rodan in the last two. Hmm. They get rid of Instance Cap? No. Um, we've just been kind of... Bide, we bided enough time for them to reset because you can enter 10 instances per hour and they roll. So um, by the time that we got to number 11, it had been about an hour since the first one. And I, uh, what did we do to kill some time? I had a Mr. Moose visit. I brought my puppy dog in. You were there, right? I think. I guess I don't remember. Lead instance. <laughs> I wasn't, had to eat something. Mm. Maybe I'll cut that as a clip too. <laughs> Cannot find a head enchant in the auction house at all. What am I missing? This tier, the helmet enchant, is the incandescent essence, which is something that instead of being made by other people, it's actually a quest that you do in the raid. Uh, it involves killing bosses a certain number of times. And then once you've done that, you get the item that allows you to apply the head enchant yourself. Can be done in LFR, quite easy to do now. There you go. I'm your Drissel. I'm your Drissel. <laughs> I'm so confused. It's kind of a wonky one off thing for sure. I only have it on one character. Eh, actually, maybe two. Gates of Hell, Gates of Hell. Oh. 
biggest hopes with 1026. It's the pass on BFA rates to make him soloable. They said they wanted to do it before the end of Dragonflight. Yeah, that would be that would that would go a long way to, on the goodwill front, at least for me. I guess I don't know what percentage of the overall community is waiting for that, but I know it's not none of us. What would I do if BFA rates were soloable? G mod, G mod runs. I have Jaina's mount. I don't have G mod. That would be kind of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, the Nihiloth all here as well. That's right. Hmm. I'm kind of cool to farm that next expansion. I just hope it's soloable next expansion. Someone explain in simple terms how raid skips work? Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Um, not every raid has them, but many raids do. And when it's present, there's typically a quest giver in the very beginning of the raid. You may need to turn on track trivial quest in order to see it. And the quest will have you kill a certain boss, usually a late boss, four times typically to collect an item off of it. Once you've done that that, and you've turned in the quest, you will then have something that you can do in the raid to get to the end and bypass some amount of the raid. So sometimes it's a door that opens, sometimes it's a portal that becomes available. The exact mechanism varies by raid. And not every raid has an unlockable skip. Um, but that's the, the basics of it. <laughs> Hoping they remove that you need a clock for the Nizoth pound. <laughs> uh, the siege skip is is a different one because they just added that in recently. Like that's kind of a funny one that wasn't like a traditional raid skip. That's like a a pity skip that they've added in. And for that, I think you just have to run the whole raid like once. And correct me if I'm wrong because I I don't know I had it al already available. And then once you've done that, you then can then just click on a scroll on the wall right by the entrance without killing any bosses and just port to the end, um, which is like the best skip of them all. I think it's available to everybody, but I do think you have to do the raid at least once. Um, but I couldn't confirm that for sure because I'd already done the raid once, so it was already active for me. Do it at least once per account. Mm. He did the raid more than once. I was there. <sighs> oh, yeah. But yeah, super, super easy compared to having to do the whole thing four times. Especially because um, the other raid skips, the old-fashioned ones, are per character and not account-wide. The Siege of Orgrimmar one is account-wide. Once unlocked, which is great. No luck. One more chance here. Cataclasmic beta just dropped if anyone was interested. <laughs> I'm I'm sure somebody is, but why do I feel like that's somebody coming in being like, Hey, yo, they've got that mint flavored Dr. Pepper. It's brand new. It's hit the streets, everybody. And everyone's like, how much did they pay you for this? <laughs> I'm sure someone's excited about the Cataclasmic beta. Power to them. I hope they have a great day. <laughs> Recommendations for mouse and keypad substitutes? Amazon links both discontinued. Mm, I need to clean that up then. Um, I use... Honestly, I'm still using the discontinued mouse, so I haven't tried any other ones. Um, I'm using a Logitech G610. I don't know if they make that anymore either. I don't like recommending stuff if I can avoid it without trying it myself first. Because um, it's, it's not impossible, but harder to vet them. <laughs> I would say look for the type of mechanical switches that you know that you like. Because I found mechanical keyboards, especially if it's from like one of the brand names, like your Logitech, your Corsair, etc. They, they all kind of do the job. Um, it's just a question of which switches you like. But then mice are tricky. Um... 
I know Corsair makes a, my, a mouse that's kind of like the Logitech one, and I'm going to try that next after this one dies, but I'm using this one for as long as I can get away with. I really wish they'd continued making these things. They're great. Mm, get up. <laughs> uh, I would not say I'll never recommend anything ever again. And I may, under some cases, um, you know, endorse things that I don't personally have, because um, at some point in my life, I'm going to have to start making money. <laughs> Hopefully I can at least test run it first. Got an older G190. Cannot find a replacement for it that I like. Yeah, I like these peripherals a lot. Stockpile, which should last a few decades. After this particular mouse that's under my right hand now dies, I have a Corsair one that is lined up to test for a replacement. I'm not thrilled about it because they're more expensive. Um, I liked recommending the Logitech one because it was affordable as well as awesome. But, you know, desperate times, etc. I think us as uh, people desiring MMO-specific peripherals, we're, we're not a dying breed, but we're not the big market force that we used to be. <clears throat> After this run, I really need to get... A refill on my water and then also I think I'm gonna switch to do an hour of um, either hardcore classic or Hearthstone Battlegrounds I have not decided which I guess I could get you guys to vote if you want um, got the red dragon one a few years ago okay duly noted I was looking at that and I couldn't decide if I wanted to give it a shot or not but I will keep that in mind if you've had it for a couple of years and it's still going that's a that's one point in favor of it Vote sounds fun. Here, yeah, let me set that up right now. Because um, I'm kind of good with either. It's basically just for what to do for the last hour of the stream. So let me set up a poll here. The SF stands for self-found. All right, vote if you want. Should be up. <sighs> um, I don't use a keypad anymore. I use a keyboard now. So I, uh, so I guess technically not up to date to what I personally use, but it would still be valid for key binding a keypad. It's just not something that I that I do at this time. I can't see the Heroes Three option. <laughs> What if I want Subnautica? Listen, you got two choices. Uh, I switched back to keyboard because there were a couple of events that I went to that required me to play WoW on a keyboard where I was not allowed to bring or plug in a gamepad. Um, and in those cases, it was really embarrassing and inconvenient for me to be like not comfy playing on a keyboard. I also wanted to clean up my desk a little bit and have one less thing on my desk. Ironically, since I switched back to a keyboard, I have not needed to play WoW on anybody else's setup because that's how life works. Um, but if it ever if it ever happened, there were industry events that needed me to play on a keyboard. <sighs> All right, Mr. Sassoon, this is my last chance of the week. It's attempt number 91. This is the what? We got it. Wah, wah. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to leave instance. I'm going to take a short break. I need to fill up my water. I am doing. And then when I get back, I will check to see what won in the poll. And, uh, and then we will fire that up for one last hour of stream. Beer beat.
Okie dokie, thank you for your patience. I decided to put on the kettle for a pot of tea in the meantime. I am gonna log over because it looks like the poll has ended and Hardcore Classic has won by a landslide. Sorry, Hearthstone Battlegrounds fans. <laughs> we are we are World of Warcraft people after all, aren't we? Let's see. Let's fire up Classic. Let me pull up my list <laughs> of um, my handy, my handy, I mean, I'll, I'll show you. I'm setting up my tea at least so that I can steep it and then take the tea bag out at my desk so I don't have to get up twice once my kettle finishes here. <sighs> so what I'm looking at here <laughs> is this is where I like to check on, um, I know there's add-ons that can do this, but this is where I like to check on pet abilities and information for classic. Mm. Um, Lola needs bite three. And this here happens to have a list of all the different things. So we're looking for either these guys, because I'm going to actually, well, well, that's not so far from me, actually. And if they're level 16 to 17, that's a reasonably safe thing for me to do. Maybe we're not going to Silver Pine, because that's really far deep in Silver Pine. Let's do this instead. Um, deep Moss Creepers. Apologies to my arachnophobes. We're going to have to mess with spiders for a minute. <sighs> because we need to tame one of those in order to learn bite rank three so that we can then teach that back to Lola. Getting another spider to teach us how to bite better precisely, which is funny because I guess spiders do bite, but like, they don't really have teeth, do they? Bellamy, thanks for the 12 month reset. Happy one year. Mm. <laughs> Appreciate it very much. So let's take a look and see how well, how well. Yeah, she's level 19. <sighs> do a little gear tour. They have fangs. I guess they do. I haven't looked very closely at the mouth parts of a spider. Oh, that's my kettle. Okay. Okay, remind me in like five minutes or so to take that tea bag out. Because <laughs> I'm not wearing my watch, so I'm going to forget. Kitty cat, I need to sit down. Well. Oi, okay. Uh, hi. I'm sorry, but it's true. You have to shit. I know. I know. You can sit on my lap. Somebody's not happy. Hi. See, that's not so bad, huh? <laughs> it's it's you, you can always tell it's happening because she looks extra comfy and you're like, she does not want me to move her. Them's the breaks. <laughs> I love you, but I'm not gonna stream for a whole hour on the floor. Okay. So if I'm not going to Silver Pine, that means I would like to rotate my way back to the Barrens, which means getting on a flight path, which means, yeah, let's take the north route. Why not? <laughs> Hang on. My brown snake. There it is. That's right. If you didn't catch our hardcore last yesterday, I spent 50 silver buying a brown snake companion because I thought it was cute. <laughs> How long would you stream from the floor? I think maybe 15 minutes tops. <laughs> Care friendly with other people or really just your girl she um now loves my partner and will snuggle with him and uh and she has accepted him as part of her family when i first brought him home she was like who are are you <laughs> no <laughs> stop how dare you take my mother away from me she was she was a little jelly <laughs> she Took her sweet time warming up to him. <sighs> um, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <sighs> she never like attacked him or anything. She would just uh she would just aim a death glare in his general direction. Um as best as she could determine with her vision. <laughs> she was not she was visibly not happy about him. <sighs> Lova's level 18. I'm level 19. My gear is looking like this. I recently um, got my leather working up to 114. I'm now making medium armor kit. So I have plus 16 armor to legs, feet, gloves, and chest piece. I've also made a fine leather tunic here. I've got three stem to cloak. Um, I've got three stem to bracers. My belt needs to change, but we'll, we'll work on that. It's got intellect on it for the moment, which I don't think does me any good, but what do you do? <sighs> does she think he stinks as well? You'd have to ask her, but I don't think so. She'll crawl right into bed with him. Um, um, flight path. Flight master. Hello. Okay, excuse me. If you could take me to the crossroads. We're going to engage in a little bit of a dangerous journey here. This is going to be risky, but it's important. And I think it'll be okay. What we're going to do is when we get to the crossroads, we are going to stable Lola. We're going to drop her off at the stable master. We are going to walk our way up into the very beginnings of Stone Talon Mountain. So we're going to take this this westerly path and then our spiders should be in this general area where we, that we need to tame. They are called they are called deep moss creepers. They should be level 16 and 17. They're actually a little deeper in. They're a little farther down the path. So what I need to do is I need to be very cautious because I'm not going to have a pet with me. And I'm going to need to make my way up there and then tame one. And then maybe work my way back so that it can teach me bite rate three. One silver. <laughs> You're almost level 20, so close to your mount. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was hilarious that there's an orc named Doris. Halfway to the mount. Well, unless we're talking about it in terms of experience, but we know. Let's, 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 not, let's not do that. <clears throat> You think my tea's steeped enough? Has it been a couple minutes? I don't know if it's been like five minutes. Does it look like tea? Let's both build him a cat. Wait a minute. How crazy would it be if you could get him out at level 20 in classic? Pretty crazy. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I also have flight paths in Mulgar, but those aren't going to help me because I don't think you can go direct south. You'd have to go through Desolus. <sighs> All right, I have enough arrows. Oh yeah, that's right. I need a stable master. I am gonna drink my tea before before I do this because I need to be very careful. I have, for safety, one swiftness potion, some lesser healing potions. Um, I'll eat a food buff just for good measure. I also need to farm some more mats for the food buff, but different issue. Stable master. It's going to be around here somewhere. There always is. Hello, is it you? No. Someone around here can do it, and someone around here can tell me. Hello. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, you can't tell me. Okay. Mm, you're just guards. I know they have a stable master. I will find it. Hey, look, it's Mancrick. Oh, yeah, I guess he's fine. It's the wife that's having a bad day. There's bags and sacks. There's the cloth vendor. It's not this way. I will find it. Believe it. Is it in the inn? Behind the inn? Let me try behind the inn. <laughs> That's funny. Hello, hello, 22. Congratulations. Hmm. Ah, there she is. All right. Ma'am? Lola? Stay safe. I'll come back to you. All right, I need some tea. We gotta, we gotta do this properly. Let's take my tea now. I'm feeling much better on the whole, but I can't believe that I still feel like a little bit like I have a cold. It's been like years 
<laughs> I know it hasn't really been years, but it feels like it's been years. All right, so we're taking this road, which should be fine. Um, I know there's a big red splotch that goes through there, but that is just the... Uh, 15 minutes. That is just the the Barrett Cotobane thing. And uh, that's going to... We can sidestep it if somebody's doing it. I'm leaving my pet so I can tame another one so that I can learn how to bite harder so I can teach them my first pet how to bite harder. One of those quirks of classic hunter along with having a, a quiver and uh, buying ammo for it. <sighs> Is level 20 when I get to use razor arrows? Because if so, exciting. But it might be 25. Yeah. Yeah, you can only have one exactly. I mean, you can have three because you get stable slots, but you can only have one active at a time. This is going to be a lot of just like auto running, but it's tense auto running. Forgot about quivers. They look lovely on your back when you're shooting stuff. Speaking of skills, actually, in case it comes to it. My staff skill is 63, and eh, it's right about where my axe skill was. So it's not capped, my meleeing skill, but it's okay. I also have upgraded versions of um, Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite trained, at least. So if I do have to fight something, we can do it. <sighs> I'm really hoping I can just sneak my way up to a Deep Moss Creeper, though. We could maybe do it, but I don't know. It's not that important to me. You get the weapon from that quest line earlier in the quest line, and it's not as good as the vendor one that I have. At least I have my brown snake with me. What's my slash plague? 19 hours and 33 minutes right now. At least with Lola the Crocodile, she has just bite and not bite and claw. Because when I was using the cat and also the bear, I was needing to keep both bite and... Actually, I don't know about the bear. The cat, for sure, had needed both bite and the claw kept up to date. You could have made an argument for, like, just doing one of them. I'm going to have to fight one of these. Well, I might not have to, but I may end up fighting one of these. If I'm going to do it, I would rather start it from ranged. So I can slow it, throw up a dot. I'm not going to backpedal because I don't want to backpedal into stuff. There we go. I'm a bite gamer on my cat. I have a Season of Discovery character. I've pretty much abandoned it. The corpse of Flightfoot. I have uh, I have room in my heart for one version of Classic, apparently. It's a shame, because all my friends are playing Season of Discovery, and they could really... Um, well, that's egocentric to say. <laughs> they, they're doing just fine without me. I'm sure they could use me for their no more runs, but I... Uh, that's okay. Don't seem much different. Uh, when Kata comes out, will you no longer play hardcore? <laughs> I bet people are just flocking to the Cataclassic beta as we speak. Mm. All right, so we are making it up to like here-ish is where those deep moss creepers are going to kick in. Oh, hey, look, free leather. I 
is Hazel going to play Gata? Um, I didn't plan on it. But never say never. I have occasionally... I didn't plan to play hardcore the first time it came out. I was really thinking I was just going to poke at it for one day for the meme. And that I was going to go right back to Mog Farming. And then it, 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 it took me. It caught me. Grab the Sunrock Flight Point. I'm not going to be that close. Um, and I'm not going to have my pet all leveled up. I could do it, I just don't, I don't know if I want to. Because I'm going to have to come back in here eventually anyways. These are later me problems, because I'm not finished with the barons yet. I'm just, I'm just trying to get my bite rank 3 here. <laughs> Good meme streamer. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Batol itch will get you. I mean, I often said that I didn't really have much interest in playing Classic again. But that if they ever did Cataclysm, I would look at it. Because Cata was, for the longest time, my favorite expansion. It was the first one I ever played from the beginning. I have a, more nostalgia for it than for anything else. I, and I also missed the opportunity to do the raids at level. Because I was... I did Firelands. because But that was the first time I'd ever gotten into a raiding guild. Before then, I was a reject pug raider. And I'm a much better player now than I was at the time. Um... So it's kind of a, you know, there is an argument to be made for going back and, like, having, like, a redemption arc. But I don't think that I want to. <laughs> yeah, what it, what is, so what is the process of playing Cataclysm? There was leveling in the various zones. That was fun. Cata, what were Cata professions like? They were pretty straightforward, right? Cata professions were pretty boring. That is a level 15, okay. Now this is a hostile village, so we do need to kind of be a bit cautious here. If we get aggro, we don't want to fight multiple things at a time if we can avoid it. But they are level they are green to me at least, and there's not very many. Archaeology was new. Yeah. The dungeons were mainly what I remember. I spent a lot of Cataclysm doing dungeons because the random heroics were challenging and they were hilarious. And it was at that time that I decided that I wanted to be a better healer and I was going to buckle down and practice. Archaeology, bot trash farm, getting all the rep up for epics. Mm, the hard heroics were cool. Oh, they were so widely trashed at the time. People were furious. It was just not the right level of difficulty for pug content. Alright, we found our deep moss creepers. There is one. I'm going to sticky glue it instead of slumber sanding it. Because... I only have four slumber stand left. I hadn't done a lot of sticky gluing. This will buy me some time. We really want this cast to succeed. <laughs> nice. Uh, we need to immediately feed it some meat. I have strider meat, so there you go. And then we... I'm not going to push forward to Sunrock right now. I'll do that later. Um, I'm going to turn around, <laughs> take it back home. And we're going to see if we can learn our bite rank 3 off of random mobs. But I'm going to let it finish eating here. It's superstition, but I have the superstition that um, I'm more likely to learn the ability if the thing's happy. So I'm just going to see if I can get it up to green here. But there's that bite rank 3, so it just needs to do that around me for a while until my character learns how to do it. <laughs> there we go. Off the back of the Wrath Dungeons, which at the end were insanely easy. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly it. People were used to just spamming random heroics, just like cruising laps through the Nexus. And then all of a sudden you throw them in, uh, <laughs> in the Kata Dungeons. Don't forget to train Grell. Oh yeah, good idea. <sighs> Can you learn rolling too? Oh yeah, there you go. 
have at it. So we are a little safer now because we have a pet. It's not as strong as Lola was, but that's okay. Crowd control is back. Yeah. I, I like that crowd control is, in this day and age, I really like our current model where in Mythic Plus, there are plenty of packs in which it's like, hey, we're going to do this poll. Can you please CC this caster or this mob? Because that lets us do this big poll without being in danger or, you know, CC has a value. But it's also typically, at least in my life, which is not representative of everybody, but it's been in groups where we've had voice because that kind of thing is a million times easier to coordinate in voice chat than text chat. We're heading back to the barrens. I do like the idea of coming and doing these quests. These look very manageable, but I'm going to finish the ones that I wanted to do in the barrens first. <sighs> With Lola and Bite Rank 3, of course. Especially because I would love to get to level 20 before I come out here, just so I can have Aspect of the, uh, of the Cheetah. But this should do us until kind of mid-20s. I think kind of 24 through 26 is when we begin to get into Bite Rank 4 territory. I have 9! Down to 9 of 20 quests. For a while, I was, I was bumped right up against that 20 quest limit. Um, mind you, a lot of these things at Ratchet I've elected to not do. Um, some of them are dungeon quests, some of them have you going very far. Guns of North Launch. There are more medals. Yeah, that's a little more reasonable, but it's a level 20 quest, which I think is why I hadn't done it yet. I think people will be disappointed by the difficulty. I wonder if they're gonna if they're gonna launch them for Cataclassic at the same level that they had them back in the day. And if so, I wonder if, it, if you're right and people will be disappointed because as a general group, WoW players on the whole have gotten better since then. Um, the It's just, it's kind of funky, but that's just kind of how it's happened. QP Ranger 2, thanks for the 21 month resub. Um, but I think it's also entirely possible that they don't launch them in that same state. Oh, I learned Bite Rank 3, easy, done. Um, I am all ready to go back and pick up Lola. I'm not even going to feed it anymore. Twenty-four Hillsbrad again, a spider. Yeah, I like to out-level it a little bit before I go, especially because in Cellfound my gear is not like bis for my level or anything, so I like to be extra safe, <laughs> just in case. You know, it's hardcore. <sighs> Poor spider. Yeah. Not destined to be our forever pet, unfortunately. It's just kind of the game that we're playing. Well, at least we got a nice straightforward road to run back. <laughs> Time to get comfy. What am I making next with leather working? Medium armor kits are a great way for me to level leatherworking at this time. Although they are a slight to vendor them, it's a slight silver loss. Not bad, but slight. Um, if I still wanted to be using light leather... 101 silver 50, 3 silver 50, that is a loss. There must be a ma um, an add-on that does... I think there must be an add-on that will do this math for me to determine whether or not vendoring it is profitable just by vendor price. But I've been I've been just kind of trying to do the math, little computer calculator situation. These I feel like vendoring for six silver are pretty good because you're talking two silver 50 for these mats, three silver 10, but it vendors for like six silver. So if you have the cured light hide to make and sell the light leather pants, that is that is profit. Trade skill master, I know. It just feels so awful to run such a big chunky trade out on 
on a self-found character that cannot even use the auction house. It's just for vendor prices. <sighs> you know, like it's like I'm looking for real simple math. Uh, I don't remember my first hunter pet ever. You know what? Maybe the mental math is good for me. <laughs> Might be a nice little workout for my brain. And then if I ever get frustrated with it, I can always pull open a calculator and be like, duh, 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 duh. Um, it's not, it's not, not the end of the world. Deathlog heat maps and Leatrix maps to unlock everything, and then also Questy. But Deathlog heat maps is showing the heat map of where people tend to die in the zone. The dangerous places. I've been on a big herbal and green tea kick. It's been really fueling me lately. <laughs> it's just nice to have something hot. You know? People dying out here getting bored auto running? You mean you're not on the edge of your seat with excitement right now? <laughs> this is why you end up with Netflix and your other monitor. It's, it's either going to be a meditative experience or a multitasking experience. There is a lot of downtime that's pretty straightforward. Uh, first hunter called Megatron had a scorpion pet called Scorpion. Oh, getting distracted running into mobs. Yeah. Yeah. And I think every time I fire up Netflix, I'm kind of at risk of that. <laughs> I tell myself I'm only doing it when I'm going to do something safe. And then I also pause Netflix anytime anything like begins to happen the same way that I like might turn off my the music in my car anytime that I need to like change lanes or pass somebody. Hello, you're my Netflix and my second monitor. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Alright, Spider, thank you for your services. I now know Bank Rake 3, so I'm going to permanently abandon you. Let's get Lola and let's teach her how to do it. Dun, 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 dun. There, I'm going to slash tier Lola. Good job. Okie dokie, let's pick a quest. We can do Harpy Lieutenant Rings up there. A little dangerous. Um, if I get one more Scythe Claw Feather, I can do the Angry Scythe Claws thing. That's tempting. Um, I don't know where the nests are, if we're being honest. I guess I could wowhead it. I wonder if once I get my third feather, if Questy will tell me. Because right now it's just showing me where all the raptors are. Do you know how hard it is to walk this long with eight legs? <sighs> You're not cranking Iron Man when you're overtaking someone? Not at this point in my life. Um, maybe later when I am a more confident driver, but at this time I feel like I need all of my focus and turning off the music helps me with that. Helps, helps, helps to keep the overwhelm tuned down a little bit. <sighs> Are the nests to the south? I mean, they might be in different areas. Do stolen silver before the raptors? You've mentioned that before. I don't know what it is. I'm... At the risk of sounding precious, I, I kind of prefer to like make my own discoveries and choices. I don't I don't I don't know that I really want to be like optimized um, by a third party. I appreciate the intent. Uh, it's kind of you to want to help, but I, I I prefer doing this on my own. Um yeah, let me let me look this up. Okay, yeah, there's three different spots for the nests. 53, 40. Yeah, 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 down there. Okay. Uh, so we're heading in the right direction. There should be scythe claws around there too, so we should be able to finish that one up. In the raptors, there's one. These are gray mobs to me now. We're going to be scraping getting the last level worth of experience in the Barrens before we move on. Mm, I lost my fubuff, but I don't think I super need it. Fun thing before flying is figuring out how to reach the Dwarven Airport on top of Ironforge. 
I don't know if I knew that there was a Dwarven airport on top of Ironforge. And rafters. Zebras. This has been a wonderful zone to be a troll in. A troll skin or leather worker because so many skinnable beasts. And as a troll, I do 5% more damage to them. <laughs> There's a raptor. I think I want to do all these quests. Oh, I do! Oh, you know what? I have the stolen silver quest already. I, I'm so sorry. I thought it was like another thing that I hadn't heard of that I thought you wanted me to like sidestep to do. There are a large grouping of nests south of Ratchet. Is that the same one? That's Mancrick's wife. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for it. Oh, that's the one. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Big danger? The area for it is a little red on the heat map. It's not hyper red. I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I'll use a Rumsey Rum. I've got five of those. Give me a little extra stamina boost. <laughs> I was uh, getting myself in a little bit of a danger off stream because I kept getting Kolkar booty keys. And I kept going back to open the Kolkar booty key chest. And there's like a patrol of a couple of, of centaurs that book it around the area. And they stop in at that chest. And they would aggro me from behind. And I would be like overwhelmed. I'd be like, ah, and I'd like, I popped a Swiftus pod at one point, And I like ran away to leash them because it was, it was too much. Hmm. How's this SF going for you? It's been good so far. I've been having a lot of fun. I haven't died yet. Um, it's my first character still. We're at level 19. We haven't died so far. Knock of wood. <laughs> mm, I'm just doing this one. I won't backtrack all the way to get the other one. Ooh. So I cannot use it, but I can sell it for six silver, which is pretty, pretty juicy profit. Don't mind if I do. Gotta keep the staff skill up. Nearly get the mace weapon training from that money. I have come to understand that heartbreakingly enough, it's true, hunters in classic cannot use maces. No blunt weapons. It's the one thing you can't do. <laughs> Six silver lookout money bags on the plane. <laughs> I've seen I've almost up to two gold. I'm so far quite pleased with my choice of professions. I wasn't sure if it was going to be the right move, but it's been going well for me. It's been good. All right, as we get up to here, I'm going to pop this Rumsey Rum. I fished this up out of a debris pool. It's a five stand buff for 15 minutes. Also gets you drunk. <laughs> and we can uh, eat another piece of food. I do need to farm up more food. My cooking skill's fine, but my mat supplies kind of suck. Um, so... It's looking like uh, I was getting clam meat from killing the cra the tortoises, rather, actually, in the pools. So I could do another lap of those to get some more. So that food gives me four stam. I'm going kind of up this hill here. And then the Rumsey Rum is going to give me another five. So we've got some decent health here, just in case. Because these are level 17 raptors, and they're kind of dense. Let's try double pull and see how we feel. So Lola hits first, Lola taunts first. I then open up, use an early berserking. And then once that one dies, I'm gonna have Lola manually swap to the other one so it doesn't come this way. Too far. Lola's at a little over half, she's doing good. 
I wouldn't do more than a two pull. If I could avoid it. So there's our third thun, thun scale feather. Sun scale feather. Pardon me. This is a little dicey. I like being ultra cautious because this is hardcore. If I die, it's a big loss for me. We don't have that this time. I'm going to stand on an ammo trap and I'm going to send Lola in on this left one first. And we got a nice proc, which is good. 30% attack speed. That's actually the same as a as using my racial. Okay. So we want to kind of hug left. I do want to skin this one because I'm greedy. It's a triple. I'm going to take that 18 and I'm going to glue it. And then I'm sending in on this one. I'm going to tank this with my health for the moment. Because I want Lola to finish off that little one and then come take this one. I'm keeping an eye on my health. What we don't want right now is any more aggro. So we don't want response. Okay. So before I actually skin anything, I want the stolen silver now. <laughs> I would say that this is okay to do, but I would disagree with just sending anyone in here. This is 100% risky. Hi, Hazel. Hello. How are you doing? Welcome. Welcome. Good morning or afternoon or evening. But now with our stam buffs, let's head back to the raptor nests and do the feathers. Barons feels scary. It has a lot of um, variance in enemy level. Um, and the game tries to send you there earlier than I would like. For hardcore, anyways. Um, if it's not hardcore, it doesn't really matter. But for hardcore, they try and send you there at like level 10. And I wouldn't. I was 14 before I set foot out here. But we have our silver. And we're heading up here, which is another red area. Any more people? Good job, Lola. That's where all of your uh, points into health and armor have come in handy. <sighs> Remember pulling so much random stuff? I think you should drink even more before charging headlong into raptors. Uh, the Strider's Stew requires red apples, which are really annoying to buy, which is why I've elected not to purchase that recipe at this time. You have to, like, get... You have to you have to get them from, like, Orgrimmar, the fruit vendor. I don't think they sell them in the Barrens. I've just been feeding the straight strider meat to my pet for pet food for the moment. <sighs> Crossroads Innkeeper has the apples. Oh, there you go. I am mistaken. Hmm. 
All right, raptor nests are up this way. We have our feathers. So let's just kind of pull this carefully. These ones are not as scary, but it is a really red area. So we're just gonna be a bit careful here. this way yep so I'm glad that we've saw that before we pulled that other pack to the side because this is no problem to take on its own but it might have been ugly if we'd had a bunch of that other stuff there also that really trucked Lola these guys not so much No, I did the blue raptor nest. Red's over there. Wife sent me a video of child number two crawling. Trying to get him there for weeks now. Oh, congratulations! Aww. She makes me want to try hardcore classic. I think it's so fun. I love the... I love the risk assessment and deployment. You know, I like looking at a situation and sizing it up. And looking at your resources and being like, this is, a, this, is, this is a good idea, this is a bad idea, this is a maybe, but we're going to try it, and this is how we're going to mitigate that risk. I know that sounds boring, but it's really fun. <laughs> Self-found, I think, is even more fun, because you can't cheese it quite so much by just, like, making a bunch of gold. Or sending yourself gold from a higher level character, and then just buying a bunch of greens on the auctionist. If you have something, you earned it on a cell phone character, and I think that's very satisfying. Okay. I'm excited because this is going to get two quests done and out of my quest log. Hunter and Warlock are my favorite things to play in Hardcore Classic by far. I think I would be a tragedy at anything else. An absolute hot mess. Oh, free spell. Lola, go. I also think that Warlock or Priest <clears throat> also classes I would consider playing in Hardcore. But a Self Found makes it much harder because I really relied on buying the best and most up-to-date wands and filling my damage with wanding. Otherwise, I was having like mana issues on both of those classes. And your DPS output is so tied to how up-to-date your wand is that it's like kind of tricky to do it without it. I don't know if I've, I don't, like, I haven't tried it. Maybe it goes better than I think. What you're saying is you want to try Warrior next? Honestly, kind of, but I will die before level 10. I will die before level 10. Like, I, I have a level 10 warrior, maybe 12, on hardcore, not, not self-found, just in general. Her name is Bopsy, and she's a miracle. I think three warriors died before Bopsy made it that far. Like, Bopsy, she's Bopsy the fourth. <laughs> uh, no link or preset. I just use Bartender. Um, I just use Bartender 4, and then I, uh, you know, turn bars on and off, change the rows around, unlock them and move them around, that kind of thing. The old-fashioned way. Those warriors died so Bobsy could fly. <sighs> mm -hmm. Four slots available in my bags. Also, okay, Bran Snake is with me, that's good. Two uncured medium hides. Hmm. 
which actually is two, uh, two leatherworking skill points. Hunter's DPS output is tied to my bow, but I have found bows easier to find than wands. I wonder if that's just because I wasn't looking for the wand vendor. Maybe the wand vendor would do the same thing for me that the bow vendor has done so far, because most of my bows that I've been using so far have been just white bows off of the vendor. And they've been keeping up with them um, with green bows that have been available to me. So maybe it would be the same thing. <laughs> but I think that I've come to realize that I don't have the like when I was playing hardcore in all those different classes the first time around, I was spending all my time on it. And uh, I just I, I like this, but I don't I think I would be spreading myself kind of thin to try a bunch of different classes. I think I need to just take this one hunter as far as she can go and like, you know, tunnel my efforts into her. I like to wish other people good luck when I see that they're self-found adventures like me. <laughs> I should put it on a macro. <laughs> oh, what time is it? It's nearly noon. It is 11.54. My goodness, we've been streaming for a couple hours now. That went so fast. Although for one hour of hardcore play, I feel like that was actually a pretty concise amount of things done. We knocked out the bite rank three. We did stolen silver. We did the raptor eggs. I've got two quests to turn in here. Oh, they both turn in here. That's really convenient. I thought one of them was going to turn in back in ratchet. That's much better. Now let's see how we're doing. Maybe we'll get to two gold. Okay, Norn Skyseer at Camp Toraho. Okay, all right. I will uh, hide that one for now. Oh yeah, that's no big deal. We've been down there already. I have a flight path for there. Three Agi, one Stam to boots versus two Stam, two Spirit. Yes, I will. I will wear those. I will wear those. And ten silver. Oh. Let's make another medium armor kit. I need more medium leather. For which my le leather is going to have to die. <laughs> but I want a new medium armor kit so I can uh, buff up those boots straight away. vendor our old boots and also anything else that's not necessary. We don't need those old sunscale feathers. I don't need the linen cloth or the sharp claw or the light feather. Mm. Or the spiked club. 20 bag slots. My goodness. <laughs> and I have 2 gold and 27 silver. Wowie. Holy moly. You're absolutely right, he does sell apples. With that in mind, do I want to cook my strider meat? The guy sells the recipe just outside. Maybe, yeah. Because I can always feed, well, 25 copper for five. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. Because I can always feed the strider stew to my, to Lola. She, she will eat the cook version. I can sneak some fruit to her diet that way. <laughs> You're rich. Poor silver. Ugh. Ooh. Cooking 100? <gasps> I'm at cooking 99. Okay, new plan. This is six stam food. Now, mind you, I'll need thunder lizard tails, but I could go for a farming project. What do you think strider meat tastes like? Turkey? <sighs> new plan. All right, so I'm gonna need some clams. I'm gonna need some thunder lizard tails. And I got a project. Also, I need to buy two salts so that I can get those medium heights to stack with the other ones. Oh, thanks, Alana. <laughs> and we'll go over here. We can tan our medium hides. Leatherworking 115.
117. Yeah, okay. Name of the bag add on. This is, I believe, better bags. Let's see here. Better bags. Better bags. <laughs> it's the uh, spiritual successor to Adi bags for classic. It's doing alright for me. I'm not mad at it. Alright, I think I need to put her to bed for now. It is approximately noon, and if I start anything else, I'm going to be here all day. <sighs> I appreciate your company very much, guys. I had a wonderful stream. Thank you for spending this time with me. I will come back tomorrow. It'll be Friday morning. We'll do another Friday morning stream. It could be some of this. It could be some Hearthstone Battlegrounds. We will, we will see. I appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.